Hey friends welcome new video and how are you all this what if Naruto was save Yugito ni during Chunin exam movie. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. What once was a factory is now nothing but rubble, three figures could be seen in the middle of the destruction that they caused. Two of them are wearing black cloaks with red clouds on it. These two belong to an organization called Akatsuki who are made up of 10s rank missing nin, their goal is to capture all 9 jinchuriki and extract the biju that they contain within them. The two Akatsuki members here were given orders to find and capture the jinchuriki that contains the nibi, they have found her in Kumo and seem to keep her within their walls, one of Akatsuki members bribed Kumo's council with money to send her to a location that he showed them on a map, the council members were all too eager to get rid of the demon whore, so it was done they sent her on a supposed a rank mission without the rakage knowing about it. She arrived at factory that she was told to check out but found nothing out of the ordinary, just as she was about to head back, the two Akatsuki members made their presence known. Yugito ni, you are to come with us, Kakuzu said to her. Who are you? Yugito demanded slowly getting into a fighting stance. Hey Kakuzu it looks like she isn't going to come with us willing, the Akatsuki member carrying a three blade scythe said to his partner. It appears so Hidan, Kakuzu said to Hidan preparing himself for battle. Good because all of this talk is boring me and Jashin Sama demands her blood, Hidan said with a wicked grin on his face. Remember leader Sama's orders, we are to bring her back alive, Kakuzu ordered not taking his eyes off of his target. Yay yay I know it just goes against my religion, Hidan replied. If you two are from Akatsuki then I cannot allow you to leave here alive, Yugito said and charges at the two. The battle was fought long and hard, the two Akatsuki members even forced her to go into her biju form but it was to no avail. No matter how many times she hits them they just keep getting back up, she even ripped the one who carries the scythe apart and he still lived just to get put back together by the other Akatsuki member, the other member is the bigger threat, she keeps throwing fire and lighting jutsus at him only for him to deflect the attacks and keep his distance from her. Unfortunately, she was losing this fight, she was losing chakra fast and had to leave her biju form lest she dies from chakra depletion, that was when the two Akatsuki members saw their chance and charged at her. Kakuzu launches his black tendrils at her piercing her in non-vital areas, while Hidan cuts her legs and arms several times to prevent her from running away or performing any jutsus, Hidan pulls out a black steel stake and pierces her hands together against the wall. There she was hanging on the only wall left standing, defeated, Yugito ni, Jonin of Kumovikar no Sato, Jinchiriki of the Nibi is defeated by the Akatsuki, but, right before she passes out from blood loss, she hears screaming of pain, Slowly lifting her head she sees the brightest blue eyes that she has have ever seen, she could barely hear the mom's words that are being said to her. Who are you? She whispered out before finally pasting out from blood lost. Five minutes prior to Yugito passing out, capture of the Nibi Jinchiriki, success, Kakuzu said as he approaches Yugito, just as he was about to take her he heard growling coming from one of the tunnels, he and Hidan quickly turned around to see two pairs of glowing yellow eyes staring at them from the dark tunnel, what shocked them more than the eyes is who the eyes belong to. Two reptilian-like creatures slowly comes out of the tunnel. These creatures are six feet in height and eight feet long from the snout to the tip of the tail. It has razor-sharp teeth showing that it is a carnivore, it also has sharp clawed hands that could rip you to shreds. The creature is standing on two strong firm legs showing the Akatsuki members that these things were built for speed. Think of the little Godzillas in the Godzilla movie, 1998. The American version for a better description. What the fuck are those things Kakuzu? Hidan said a little intimidated by the creature's appearance. I don't know but whatever they are they don't appear to be friendly, Kakuzu said to Hidan, just as he finished that sentence two more of the creatures appeared behind them and charged at them. Where the hell did those two come from I didn't even sense them coming from behind, Kakuzu said as he kicks one of the creatures away from him, he failed to notice the other two from before charging at them, Kakuzu was rammed by one of them in the back and is sent flying in the direction he was facing, Hidan is having a hard time fighting them, it seems to him that the skin they have is hard as steel. His scythe just couldn't get past their steel skin and it was pissing him off. While this is going on a figure hiding in the shadows watches the chaos going on, waiting for his chance to make his move, the reptilian creatures kept pushing Hidan and Kakuzu further and further away from Yugito, seeing his chance now he disappears from the shadows and appears in front of Yugito, he asses the injuries she has and sees the wounds she did have were healing, but she still lost a lot of blood seeing the huge puddle beneath her feet. Hey I am here to help you alright, everything is going to be okay now. The mysterious figure said to her, just as he was about to pull the stake out that is holding her in place he heard screaming. Apparently one of the reptiles got a hold of Hidan's arm and ripped it off causing him immense pain, 
The reptiles then converge on top of him and started ripping him apart, Hidan screaming the whole time while this is happening. Who are you? The mysterious figure heard her whispered out before losing conscience, he pulls the stake out and catches her as she falls and holds her bridal style, he whistled loudly catching all four of the reptiles attention. We're done here let's go, the figure said disappearing back into the shadows with Yugito in his arms, the reptiles started going back into the tunnels from where they came from. Where the fuck do you think you are going I am not done with you yet, Jashin Sama demands your blood. The head of Hidan yelled at the retreating reptiles. One of the reptiles walks over to the head of Hidan and cocks its head to the side all the while the head yelling curses and profanity at it, the reptile lowers its head and grabs the head with its mouth and runs off into the tunnels with the screaming head of Hidan. Kakuzu pushes the building's rubble off of him and stands up, that hit he received felt like he was hit by one of Tsunade's super strength punches, he was actually grateful that he had his armor jutsu otherwise that hit would have done more damage, he looks at the body of what used to be his partner. We may have a problem, Kakuzu said to no one. A plant like figure slowly emerges from the ground next to him wearing the same cloak that Kakuzu and Hidan wears, showing that he is an Akatsuki member also. This member's name is Zetsu. He is the Akatsuki's top spy and information gatherer. He has two types of personalities that coexist in one body. Where is the Nibi Jinchuriki? The dark side of Zetsu asked Kakuzu. She was taken from us by an unknown man. He took her while me and Hidan were busy with some reptile like creatures, Kakuzu said, looking at the tunnel where the creatures came from. Leader Sama isn't going to be happy that you lost the Jinchuriki, the white side of Zetsu said as he slowly went back into the ground to report what has happened to his leader. Kakuzu gives one last glance at the body, if you call it that, of Hidan, Kakuzu then leaves the area, heading back to the Akatsuki base for his next orders. Somewhere deep in high no Kunis forest Yugido slowly woke up feeling somewhat warm and comfortable, everything that had happened came rushing back to her. She instantly gets up but instantly regrets it as a huge jolt of pain shot up through her body forcing her to sit back down. How am I still alive, I thought the Akatsuki had me, Yugito thought to herself as she takes in her surroundings, there is a blanket that was used to keep her warm, there was also a small campfire next to her, she looks down at herself to see that most of her body is covered in bandages, feeling somewhat violated that someone took her clothes off and put medical bandages on her, she started to take the bandages off but stopped when she heard a voice. Ah, oh, I wouldn't do that now if I were you, a voice said. Yugito was instantly on alert, she stood up quickly fighting the pain that is surging through her body, she went for her pouch that contains her weapons only to realize it's not there. Looking for this, the voice said as an object was thrown at her feet from the trees that surround her, she looks at the object and grabs it, being careful in case it was trap, it was a pouch. She opens the pouch to see all of her weapons and equipment in it, she looks back up into the dark forest, scanning for the person who gave her her pouch back. Why would you give me my weapons back knowing that I could kill you with them? Yugito asked still looking the person in the dark forest. Well that depends on your answer, are you friend or foe? The voice said. Yugito thought her answer over carefully, asking herself the question over and over in her head, and finally coming up with an answer. I choose friend, she said to the person in the forest. Good choice, the voice said, what would have happened if I chose foe? Yugito asked only to feel something cold and hard being pressed against her throat. Then I would have to kill you, the man behind her said. Yugito was shocked, she didn't sense nor hear him sneak up on her from behind, if he wanted to he could easily kill her and she wouldn't be able to do anything about it, she closes her eyes accepting her fate that she going to die here, the kanai that is being held to throat was pulled away. Why are you looking so glum? The man asked her as he puts the kanai away. Yugito opens her eyes surprised that the man behind her hasn't killed her yet, aren't you going to kill me? Why should I? The man said backing away from her. Quicker than he can react he was pinned against a tree with a kanai being held to his throat, because I can kill you right now, Yugito said pressing the kanai deeper into the mon's throat, said man only laughed, confusing her greatly when she is about to kill him. Well that would be impossible because you see I am only a shadow clone, soon as he said that he poofed out of existence causing Yugito to lose her balance from lack of resistance, she righted herself quickly holding the kanai in defensive position. Now that wasn't very nice, to threaten the man who saved you from being captured. Yugito whipped around quickly, grimacing in pain from the sudden motion, they're sitting next to the campfire cooking what seems to be a rabbit as a tall blonde hair man, he looked to be in his late teens, his wild spiky blonde hair reaching down to his shoulders, he has a lean muscular body not that of a bodybuilder but more of a swimmer type of a body, he is wearing a black sleeveless shirt with a red spiral on the back. He is also wearing the standard black shinobi pants with a kanai holster on his right thigh. She then looks back up to his eyes to see the same kind of bright blue eyes she has seen before she passed out. While she was checking him out, he was doing the same, 
She has straight blonde hair tied into a single ponytail. She has dark beautiful brown eyes that he could stare at for all eternity and never grow tired of them. She is wearing a tight black and white shirt with black ambu style pants wearing a red sash tied around her waist and is also wearing purple fingerless gloves. She has a body that women would kill to have, all in all she is extremely beautiful. Yugido notices him checking her out and had to fight back the blush that is slowly rising to her cheeks. Why am I blushing from him just looking at me I mean sure he is attractive but several other men checked me out before what makes him so different from them. Yugido questioned herself, she puts the kanai back into her pouch and cautiously walks over to the log opposite of him never taking her eyes off of him. They sat there in silence for 10 minutes, Yugito having enough of the silence breaks it. I never really got your name, Yugito said to the blonde haired teenager. He smacks himself in the head, ah how could I have forgotten, he said and extends his hand out to her, Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto said with a huge grin on his face. Yugito was a little hesitant but took the offer hand and shook it, I am Yugito ni Janin of Kumobikure. Ah, it's a pleasure to meet you Yugito chan, Naruto said happily making her blush a little with suffix he added to her name while handing her some of the rabbit that he cooked for them. Yugito took the cooked rabbit from him and gave him her thanks for the food. While they were eating she couldn't help but wonder how they were able to get away from the Akatsuki when even she couldn't defeat them, so she voiced her opinion about this. Say Naruto, she said getting his attention. How did you get me away from those two guys? I mean, you do realize that they are S ranked missing nin and that they will hunt you down and kill you for taking me from them. Yugito asked him as she set the food down next to her and waited for his answer. She knows the Akatsuki are no pushovers as she found out firsthand, so she has to know how they got away. Yea, I know they are S ranked missing nin. As for how we got away, I had my summons provide distraction, getting the two missing nins away from you so I could get you out of there, Naruto explained to her. You know they'll be after you now, Yugito said. I am already being hunted by them. They've been after me for about five years now, Naruto said, surprising her greatly. Why would they be after you? Yugito asked, What could he have done to the Akatsuki to have them after him for five years? Yugito thought as she watches Naruto set his food down and looks at her. Because, I am the same as you, Naruto said, shocking her to the core. You mean you're yes, I am the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, just as you are the Jinchuriki of the Nibi, Naruto said nonchalantly and went back to eating the rabbit he set aside. Yugito is speechless, this man in front of her is the Jinchuriki of the strongest biju in the world and he rescued her from the Akatsuki not caring if he gets caught also. Oi Manila, stop stalking our guest she isn't food, Naruto said to no one. Who are you talking to? There is no one here but us, Yugito asked him wondering if he is starting to lose his sanity. Oh I am talking to my summon he thinks everything is food, Naruto said laughing towards the end of his sentence, once he calmed down enough he looks past her shoulder to the dark forest behind her. Come on out, Manila, and introduce yourself to our guest. Yugito hears heavy footsteps coming in behind her. She turns around, only having to duck to avoid getting hit by a red blur. Yugito gets back up and looks back at Naruto and freezes. Standing behind him is a human sized monster with its mouth open around Naruto's head. Yugito slowly starts backing away from it. Ah, Naruto, there is something behind you, Yugito said, terrified of the thing. Naruto looks above him to see a row of razor sharp teeth. He closes his eyes and lets out a long and heavy sigh. Faster than she can blink Naruto's hand quickly shot up slamming the monster's jaw shut, the monster's eyes went wide and backs away from Naruto whimpering in pain. How many times have I told you Manila I am not food, Naruto said calmly to the monster behind him. What the hell is that thing? Yugito yelled out still backing away from them. This is Manila, he is my summon and he is also my familiar, Naruto replies as he threw a dead rabbit to the creature behind which eats the whole thing in one bite. What are they called? Yugito asked as she watches the creature lay down. They are called Godzuki, Naruto answered, I've never heard of a summon called Godzuki, Yugito said walking back to them but keeping her distance from the Godzuki. Well it's an ancient summon that hasn't been seen for thousands of years, Naruto said as he went back to cooking another rabbit. How did you come by such a summon if it hasn't been seen for thousands of years, Yugito questioned him. Naruto was just about to answer until a red blur shot past him and slams into the Godzuki named Manila. Yugito quickly shot up and grabs her kanai while Naruto just sits there without a care in the world. Yugito just stares at him in disbelief. Aren't you going to help your summon, it's being attacked, Yugito asks him. He looks at her with a bored expression, why should I help him, they do this all the time, Naruto says to her and starts poking at the fire with a stick finding it more interesting than the fight that is happening next to him. Yugito just looks at him with disgust, how could he be so cold to his summon and not help it? She was about to go help the Godzuki but Naruto jumps in front of her stopping her in her tracks. Yugito tries to move around him but he just won't get out of her way. Yugito growls out in frustration, 
damn it get out of the way he needs help. Yugido chan if you get involved in the fight, I can't guarantee your survival, Naruto said to her in a serious tone. That stopped her cold in her tracks, her eyes narrowed dangerous, what did he mean he can't guarantee my survival, I can handle myself just fine. Naruto was confused on why her killer intent was being directed at him, until he realizes what he said, he started waving his hands apologetically, no wait you misunderstand I am sure you can take care of yourself just fine, but if you get in between them they will tear you apart like they did to Hidan. Yugito looks past him and got a good look at the Godzuki's attacker to see that it's another Godzuki but only slightly bigger, Naruto looks over his shoulder, Kaiser stop picking on your little brother, Naruto said to the other Godzuki. Yugito looks at Naruto with a confused expression, Kaiser? He's my other familiar and Manila's older brother, Naruto explained as the Godzuki's separate from each other and stands next to him. But if they are brothers then why did he attack him? Well it's sort of his way on toughing him up but I only see it as him bullying Manila, he explained just to receive a nip in the arm from Kaiser, Naruto glares at him while Kaiser looks away acting like nothing happened. Naruto snaps his fingers and walks over to his bag and digs through it, a few seconds later he finds what he is looking for and pulls out a scroll, he sits down and unrolls the scroll, he goes through a few hand seals and slams his hand on the scroll, what came out of the scroll frightened Yugito to the core. There in the middle of the scroll is Hidan's head, what surprised her was that the head isn't moving or saying anything, is is he dead? Yugito asked not taking her eyes off the head. Naruto only shakes his head, no he is not dead. I placed a seal on him that forces him to sleep because he wouldn't shut up, he said to her as he removes the seal that was on Hidan's forehead. Hidan's eyes instantly shot open and looks up and sees Naruto, you. Jashin Sama demands your blood for doing this to his servert, I am going to kill slowly and Pai Hidan yells at Naruto but was interrupted by him. Yay yay I've heard it all before so are you going to shut up or am I going to have to give you to Manila, because he's been wanting a new chew toy for a while now, he said nonchalantly. Hidan looks at the Godzuki who is staring at him intently with drool coming down from its mouth, he pales at the thought of becoming that thing's chew toy and wisely kept his mouth shut. Naruto lets out a sigh of relief that Hidan shuts up, off finally some silence, he then looks at Hidan with a serious expression, now back to the reason why I brought you out, who would the Akatsuki go after next once you captured the Nibi? Fuck you I ain't telling you shit, Manila, Hidan sees the Godzuki coming towards him and started freaking out, okay okay ill talk ill talk just keep that thing away from me. Naruto stops Manila reaching his new toy and looks at Hidan, then start talking. Once we captured the Nibi we were to go to Kirigakir no Sato and capture the Jinchuriki that contains the Sanbi, Hidan told him. Now see that wasn't so hard now was it, Naruto said with a smile as he places the seal back onto Hidan's forehead forcing him back to sleep, Naruto then seals the head back into the scroll and puts it back into his bag, Naruto looks at Yugito who is staring at him with wide eyes and mouth agape, what? How what what just happened? Yugito asked him, what does it look like, I was interrogating him into telling me who their next target is, Naruto simply said as he puts the campfire out and gathers his belongings. But why would you keep the head with you and not just incinerate it? Because he holds valuable intel on the Akatsuki, plus Manila doesn't really want to lose his new toy, Naruto stated as he begins his trek into the forest, Yugito blinks at his reply. I thought you said that he wouldn't become Manila's new chew toy? A mischievous grin appears on Naruto's face, what he doesn't know can't hurt him, Yugito had to stifle a giggle at the unfortunate things that happens to Hidan without his knowledge. Where are you going? Yugito said as she realizes he was leaving her behind, Naruto stops in his tracks and looks at her like she was dumb. Well isn't it obviously I am heading to Kirigakir no Sato. But didn't you just hear him, the Akatsuki will be there, Yugito practically yelled at him. Yes but so would the Jinchuriki of the Sanbi, I am heading there to get him or her out of there before the Akatsuki shows up, Naruto said to her and continues walking into the forest, Manila, Kaiser we're heading to Kiri let's go. Manila and Kaiser instantly ran after Naruto and walks on either side of him, you're welcome to join us if you want, Naruto said to her as he disappears into the dark forest with his two familiars. Yugito stood there alone, she turns around and was about to head in the opposite direction but stops shortly before she can even take her first step, she realizes that she doesn't even know where the hell she is, she quickly turns around and dashes after Naruto yelling, hey wait for me you little shit, and so begins the adventures of Naruto and Yugito. Two shadows could be seen moving at a rapid pace through the trees of Mizu no Kuni, they stopped behind a thick tree and stays there, hiding in the shadow, not moving a muscle, a reptilian like creature comes out of the trees looking around, scouting the area around it, the creature then lifts its nostrils in the air and sniffs the air around it, it then stomps the ground three times, the two shadows steps out into the light and reveals them to be Naruto and Yugito. 
So is the area up ahead all clear Kaiser? Naruto asks the Godzuki and receives a nod from it. Naruto reaches into his bag and pulls out a scroll, he unseals a fish and throws it to Kaiser, Yugito looks around and notices that Manila has yet to show up. Hey where is Manila? Yugito asked, after their departure for Kiri two weeks ago, Yugito grew accustomed to the Godzukis being around and is no longer afraid of them, especially Manila, she grew a liking to him, as he to her, he is just like a dog that always wants to be petted and loved, and when he is gone for long periods of time she gets worried about him, and now he was due back at the same time as Kaiser was. Naruto was getting a little worried too, from what he had heard was that the civil war in Kiri was still going on, go find your brother quickly, we'll move on up ahead, he told his familiar, Kaiser lets out a snort of annoyance having to go find his lost little brother but nonetheless heads out into the forest to begin his search, Naruto and Yugito continue on their path to Kirigakir no Sato. So Naruto what village are you affiliated with? Yugito asked him while keeping a lookout for any enemies they might encounter. I am from Konoha, Naruto replied while also keeping a lookout for any enemies. It's kind of hard to believe that Konoha would let their Jinchuriki roam around the elemental nations freely, Yugito stated to him. They wouldn't, I was given permission to go on a three-year training trip with Jiraiya, Naruto stated. Yugito stumbled a bit before regaining her bearings quickly and looks at him in shock, he was on a training trip with Jiraiya, one of the legendary Sanin. People would kill just to be trained by him, I have to confirm that he is telling the truth. If you were really trained by Jiraiya then show me something that he has taught you. Yugito watches Naruto stick his right hand out to the side in front of her, palm facing up, what happens next shook her to the core. In Naruto's hands is a spinning blue orb, her eyes widen when she recognizes the jutsu, there before her is the legendary jutsu that the Yandaimi Hokage created, he knows the fucking Rasengan. Yugito was so surprised that he knows the Rasengan that she misses seeing one of the tree roots sticking out of the ground and trips over it, she closes her eyes expecting to hit the hard ground below her, but when the pain never came she opens her eyes and sees that Naruto had caught her fall, she pushes away from him and blushes in embarrassment, sorry I wasn't pay. Are you okay? What? Yugito wasn't sure if she heard right. I asked if you were okay, you're not hurt anywhere are you? Naruto asked her, concern evident in his voice. Yugito is taken aback by his question, the people back in her village never cared if she lives or dies, they always see her as a demon whore and never cared about her, the only people who truly cared about her is Killer B his students, Darui, Mabui, Rakage attendant, and the Rakage, they have always looked out for her well-being and treated her like she was family, now this man was concerned about her well-being after only knowing her for only two weeks. Coming out of her stupor she looks at him, yes, I am fine thanks for asking. Naruto lets out a sigh of relief, that's good to hear I was getting worried there for a second, we should rest for a bit before we go any farther. I agree, we have been running for two days straight since we got here. Yugito stated and sits down on the ground, Naruto also sits down across from her and pulls out two dango sticks from his bag and hands one to her, she takes it from him giving him her thanks and eats the dango. While she was eating she couldn't help but wonder where Jiraiya is, I mean he is supposed to be training him, right? Yugito voiced her thoughts, hey Naruto where is Jiraiya? I mean he is training you right? Naruto stopped eating the dango and looks at her. Yes, he was training me but I don't know where he is at now, Naruto said to her and resumes eating his dango. What do you mean he was training you? Yugito asked curiously. Naruto closes his eyes and lets out a long sigh, he then opens his eyes and looks her straight in the eyes, Yugito couldn't help but notice how beautiful his cerulean blue eyes are. His eyes are so beautiful, Yugito thought to herself. You better get comfortable because what I am about to tell you may take a while, Naruto told her as he lies down on the soft grass, you remember when you asked me how I came across the Godzuki summoning contract. Yugito instantly sat up straight, giving the blonde her full attention, she has wanted to know how he came by the contract ever since she first saw the Godzukis, now she is about to find out. Well it started about two and a half years ago, Naruto said, starting his story. Flashback two and a half years ago, between Suchi no Kuni and Keiz no Kuni. We find a 16 year old Naruto walking around in a barren valley, Naruto kicks a small rock. Stupid arrow Senen, he said he will help me with completing the Rasengan but no he had to do his stupid research, Naruto growled out and kicks another rock hard against the valley's wall and get embedded in it, Naruto turns around and was about to walk out of the valley until he heard the wall behind him start to crumble and fall apart, he turns back around and sees what used to be wall was now a huge cave. Naruto cautiously walks over to the cave, watching for any traps he might trigger. He peers inside the archway to see nothing but pitch black. Naruto closes his eyes and when he opens them they are no longer cerulean blue but blood red ones with slitted pupils, he now can see everything 
One of the perks of having Kyubi sealed inside of you is that with Kyubi's eyes you can see everything in picture perfect clarity. In pure darkness he can see everything like it is daytime. He walks inside to see a variety of tunnels leading in different directions. Naruto looks back behind him towards the way he came in. Maybe I should wait for Aero Senen to get back before I venture any further, Naruto said to himself and thought about it for a few seconds, nah, and Naruto walks into one of the tunnels. Unbeknownst to him as soon as he walked into the tunnel the cave entrance he came in sealed itself shut preventing anyone from getting in or out. At the same time in the valley a man with long white hair wearing a red cloak with green short shirt kimono with matching pants underneath the cloak, he was also wearing a mesh armor that shows out of his sleeves and legs, he was carrying a large scroll behind his back, this man was known as Jiraiya, one of the three legendary senin and teacher of Minato Namikaze and Naruto Uzumaki, the latter being his current student. Jiraiya jumps down into the valley and lands in a crouching position. Alright Gaki let's work on adding your wind affinity to the Rasengan and then after that we can go home, Jiraiya said not realizing that Naruto isn't in the valley anymore, not hearing any response from his hyperactive apprentice, Jiraiya stands up and looks around the valley but he doesn't see Naruto anywhere. That's strange usually he would have been ecstatic to learning something new, Jiraiya thought to himself, alright Naruto that's enough you can come out now, all he got was silence. Now Jiraiya is really starting to get worried about his godson, he started to search for Naruto in the valley and came upon a bunch of rubble, Jiraiya looks up to see nothing but a wall, he walks up to the wall and presses his ear against it and knocks on it and hears a hollow sound. It's hollow? He said and steps back, he goes through a sequence of hand seals. Doden. Iwadanmaku no jutsu, rock barrage. Rocks surrounding Jiraiya floated into the air and shot off to the wall slamming against it. Jiraiya keeps the jutsu active hitting the hollow wall with hundreds of rocks at a rapid rate. After about 10 seconds later Jiraiya could see that the wall is cracking, so he increased the barrage's speed even faster, dust started forming from the wall obscuring Jiraiya's view of the wall, he cancels the jutsu and waits for the dust to settle. When the dust finally settled Jiraiya could see the cave and walks to it, soon as he was about to walk in he was forcefully pushed back by an unseen force, what is this? A barrier shield or something? Jiraiya thought and looks at the ground inside of the cave and see footprints. Naruto must be went in there Jiraiya ran to the cave hoping he could get in, but he was forcefully pushed back yet again but this time a lot harder, the force sent him sailing through the air and slamming into the opposite side of the valley, hitting his head against the wall hard, he was rendered unconscious from the blow to the head and slumps down on the ground. With Naruto what was that? Naruto said turning around quickly, peering into the darkness with Kayubi's eyes, hearing nothing he shrugged his shoulders and continues walking down the stairway. When he reached the end of the stairway, he comes to a long hallway with what appears to be a steel door at the end of it, he walks towards the steel door, he grabs the knob to the steel door and twists it, nothing, Naruto pushes against the door to open it, but it won't budge. What the hell? Naruto looks at the edges of the door and sees that it is welded shut, preventing anyone from entering. Wanting to know what was on the other side, Naruto steps back and forms a Rasengan. He then slams the Rasengan into the door and blasts the door off of its hinges. Naruto walks into the room and looks around and sees that the room is empty. He walks further into the room and trips over something and falls face first into the ground. Groaning in pain he picks himself off of the ground and looks behind him to see a scroll lying on the ground. Naruto picks the scroll up and unrolls it, the words on the scroll were so faded that even with Kayubi's eyes he still couldn't read it. The only thing he could read on it was two words that say signature here, not knowing what it will do. He bites his thumb and puts his signature on it that says Naruto Uzumaki was here, the next thing that happens was the scroll started glowing brightly, it was glowing so bright that it lit up the whole room, Naruto had to turn off Kayubi's eyes because of the intensity of the light was hurting his eyes, squinting his eyes, he looks at the scroll and sees three huge bold words on it. Godzilla summoning contract, Naruto said to himself, soon as he said that the scroll disappears in him along with it, leaving the room to be consumed by darkness again. With Jiraiya Jiraiya Chan wake up, a small elderly toad wearing a cape that has the kanji for head on it was standing in front of an unconscious Jiraiya. Osunade Haim, yes I would love to see more of your twins, Jiraiya said in his sleep while giggling perversely and kicks the small toad away from him, getting irritated that for the past 5 minutes he has been trying to wake him up but every time he tries he just kept getting kicked away, having enough of listening to Jiraiya's constant compliments of how beautiful Sunade's twins are and getting kicked, he takes things to the next level. Wake up you damn fool. The toad then proceeded to beat the shit out of Jiraiya with his cane. Jiraiya woke up instantly only to regret as he receives the beating of a lifetime. After Jiraiya's beating from the small toad, the toad stands back and looks at Jiraiya who is badly bruised. Why is Naruto-chan's name crossed off of the summoning contract? How what do you mean Fugasaku-sama? 
Naruto's name isn't crossed off of the summoning contract, if it was I would have known instantly, Jiraiya told Fugasaku. Then how do you explain this? Fugasaku grabs a scroll that is five times his size and throws it to Jiraiya with ease, catching the scroll Jiraiya recognizes it as the toad summoning contract and unrolls it, scanning through the previously contract holders until he got to Naruto's name to see a line going through it. Is this some kind of joke Fugasaku, because if it is it isn't funny because you know as well as I do know what that means if someone's name is crossed off, Jiraiya told the elderly toad in a tone that would scare even the most battle-hardened shinobi. I know Jiraiya-chan but either he signed another summoning contract or he is dead, Fugasaku stated. Naruto would never sign another summoning contract without consulting me about it and I know for a damn fact that he isn't dead, Jiraiya told him. Then where is he Jiraiya-chan? Where is Naruto-chan? That question made Jiraiya pause for a moment until he realized that Naruto was nowhere to be seen. His eyes widen when he remembers seeing Naruto's footprints going inside of a cave before he was blown back by some unknown force and rendered unconscious. He gets up and runs towards the cave but stops before entering. Not wanting to make the same mistake twice, he puts his right hand forward. Not meeting any resistance he slowly walks inside the cave. Once he was fully inside of the cave he blows out a few fireball jutsus to light up the dark cave. He sees multiple passageways, he looks at the ground to see Naruto's footprints heading towards the center passageway, dashing quickly to the center passage, he blows out a few more fireball jutsus so he doesn't run into anything, he runs down the stairway he came across, when he got to the end he stops and looks at the steel door, walking towards it he sees that it was blown off of its hinges. Naruto must be done this with his Rasengan, Jiraiya mused and cautiously walks inside the room. Jiraiya blows out another fireball but this one being four times bigger than the others. It lit up the whole room for about 10 seconds but that was enough time for him to get a good look around, the place was practically empty, not even a speck of dust could be seen, just before the fireball faded away, he spots something shiny in the middle of the room, he grabs the shiny piece and sees that it was a Hide aid with Konoha's emblem on the metal piece, but this isn't just any Hide aid, this was Naruto's Hide aid, one that was given to him by Uruka as gift for becoming a genin. Why is Naruto's Hide aid here? This means so much to him, why would he leave it here unless, Jiraiya then blows out yet another baljutsu and looks at his surroundings, knowing Naruto if he got into a fight he would cause as much destruction as he possibly can, but Jiraiya doesn't see any battle scars in the room at all not even a scratch, it's like he vanished into thin air, seeing no point in staying in there any longer he leaves the room with Naruto's Hite aid in his hand. Fugasaku has been waiting for Jiraiya patiently at the cave's entrance, Jiraiya walks out of the cave clutching onto something in his hand, he stops next to the toad while said toad looks up at him expectantly. Naruto isn't in the cave, Jiraiya said to Fugasaku. Then the Akatsuki must be got a hold of him and probably are extracting the Kyubi from him right now, once that happens Naruto-chan will de Fugasaku never got to finish his sentence as Jiraiya held him up in the air by the throat glaring dangerously at him. Don't even finish that sentence, Naruto is not dead and nor is he going to anytime soon, Jiraiya said murderously dropping the toad unceremoniously on his rear. If the Akatsuki came after him the room where I found his Hite aid in wouldn't even be there because of the amount of destruction he would cause, the room looked like it hasn't been touched in ages, so Akatsuki doesn't have him. Jiraiya turns away from Fugasaku and walks in the opposite direction. Where are you going Jiraiya-chan? Fugasaku asked rubbing his sore throat. I am going to go look for Naruto, it's about time I start acting like a godfather that I am supposed to be instead of an old pervert, I am putting my spy network into overdrive to find Naruto. Jiraiya said not even glancing back at the toad. Fugasaku let a small smile appear on his face, then the Gama clan shall help you in finding Naruto-chan, he is after all family to us, Fugasaku then reverse summoned himself back to mount, Myoboku to inform the other toads leaving Jiraiya by himself. Never again am I losing another student Jiraiya thought to himself seriously and takes off into the country to put his spy network to work, hang on Naruto I am coming for you. Naruto unknown location uh what happened? Naruto said to no one, sitting up he takes in his surroundings and sees that he was in some grassy plain, how did he get here, the last thing he remembers was finding a scroll and a bright light, where am I? You are in the lands of Furui Sanzai, ancient beings. Naruto turns around and was awed by the sight before him. Standing before him was a reptilian-like creature standing at 80 meters tall bigger than Gamabunta. Its tail was at least 127 meters long, the creature has short arms but was long enough to grab a hold of you and dig its sharp claws into you. Naruto looks at the creature's back to see fin-like spikes coming out of its back extending from the back of its head all the way to its tail. The creature was so massive that Naruto had to crane his neck all the way back just to look at it, an. Think of the American Godzilla version. Yellow eyes stares into blue cerulean ones, 
Naruto slowly backs away absolutely terrified of the thing before him, he trips over a rock that seemed to have appeared out of nowhere, wh what is that thing? That there Naruto is the king of all monsters, Godzilla, Kyubi told Naruto. Kyubi and Naruto had somehow formed a mental link when Naruto first used its power during the wave mission, ever since then they have been in constant contact, well more like talking Kyubi to death. Kyubi usually sleeps most of the time but when Naruto found the Godzilla summoning contract he became wide awake and when Godzilla showed up he was fully alert. What do you mean Godzilla is the king of all monster aren't you supposed to be the king? Naruto asked Kyubi. Kyubi let out a snort of annoyance, I am the king of hell, he is the king of all monsters. If he is the king of all monsters then just how strong is he? Naruto wondered looking up at the creature in a whole different light. In an all out fight between me and him, hell win. Kyubi grumbled the last part out hating the fact that he is weaker than Godzilla. Bugged-eyed Naruto was even more terrified of Godzilla, to be able to beat Kyubi in an all-out fight is a huge feat. Naruto was so deep in his thoughts that he didn't notice that Godzilla closed the rest of the distance between them and lowers his head to get a better look at Naruto, coming out of his thoughts Naruto screamed at just suddenly seeing Godzilla's head within arm's reach of him. Why are you here hatchling and what is your name? Godzilla asked. Na Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto stuttered, and how did you end up here Naruto Uzumaki Godzilla questioned. I signed your summoning contract and I ended up here, Naruto replied. Godzilla arched an eyebrow if you could call it that by the slight rise of muscle above Godzilla's eye, you signed my summoning contract that has never been signed before, Godzilla questioned. Naruto nodded his head saying yes, a thunderous boom was heard in the air. Naruto looks up at Godzilla to see him laughing. Confused by this Naruto asked him why he is laughing. Godzilla pointed his long clawed finger at Naruto. I am laughing at you because how can a hatchling like you be able to summon me? Just by looking at you I can tell you are very weak, getting tired of always being underestimated Naruto performs a few hand seals. Food and Kazikiri no Jutsu, Wind Cutter. A blade of wind was sent at Godzilla's foot just barely cutting the thick scaly skin, but what Naruto just did was the biggest mistake you will ever make. Godzilla let out a huge roar of anger. The great beast pins Naruto down by its hand pushing him into the ground and brings his face close to Naruto's, yellow eyes glaring dangerously at him. Smooth move dumbass you just got us a one way ticket to the afterlife, Kyubi said berating his container for his stupidity, attacking the king of all monsters is not a wise thing to do unless you have a death wish. You dare attack me the king of all living things? Godzilla roared applying more pressure to Naruto's body making him gasp out for breath, Naruto despite his predicament glared right back at Godzilla. You think you can scare me because of your power then give it your best shot, there are far more powerful people and summons out there, Naruto yelled but regrets saying that because his body is now being pushed further into the ground, from so much pressure being applied to his body one of his rib bones cracked causing Naruto immense pain. Boy I have wiped cities and villages off of the map, never to be rebuilt again because there is no one left to rebuild it and there is not a single soul out there that can match me in power besides the J-U-U-B-I-W-H-O is now sealed in the moon above US so choose your next words carefully for they can be your last in this world. Naruto's eyes widen, he wiped cities and villages out and they were never rebuilt again, he killed every single person in their men, women, and children, this thing is no king, he is a monster, you attacked and destroyed people's homes killing innocents, and for what just to show the world your power, you are no king you are a monster. Innocents, they are far from being innocent for they have wronged me in several ways, Godzilla said lessening the pressure on Naruto. Naruto gasped out in relief finally being able to breathe properly again. He could feel Kyubi healing his cracked rib and the strain that his body just went through. Naruto looks up at Godzilla to see a faraway look in his eyes. It all started with a single bomb, a bomb that is so powerful that it could destroy cities in an instant. They dropped one on my home island destroying everything on it. But I was the lucky one I survived the bomb, I scour what is left of the island desperately looking for any survivors that I might have missed. But what I didn't know was what the bomb left behind after it exploded. My body was absorbing the radiation lefted by the bomb causing changes to my DNA. My whole body changed from what I used to be into what I am now, but it didn't stop there I still kept getting bigger, I grew so big that my home island could no longer support me forcing me to search for a new home. Naruto just laid there under Godzilla's hand listening to the mighty beast tale, then that's when it all happened, I came to an island that was large enough to sustain me but it was already occupied by you. Godzilla said pointing at Naruto with his other clawed hand. Me? Naruto said with a confused expression on his face, how could he occupy a whole island? Yes you, you humans were already living on the island that I was planning to live on, so I let them keep the island as their own and I went in search of another island to call home. Godzilla's face then turned into one of anger, growling dangerously he continues his tale, 
But just as I was about to head into the sea I was attacked by the humans living there, they attacked me with planes, tanks, ships, and soldiers. They were all trying to kill me, Godzilla's yellow eyes started glowing, but I responded in kind I destroyed their planes and ships, I crushed their tanks and I incinerated their soldiers, I annihilated their army, Godzilla roared. Naruto was mesmerized by Godzilla, he took on an entire army and defeated it easily. After my battle with the humans I returned to the sea to find my future home. And did you find your future home? Naruto asked curiously. A small rumbling noise came from Godzilla's throat signifying that it is chuckling. Why yes I did and I was able to find another one like me there too, a female one. Naruto sees Godzilla smiling well from what he could count as a smile from rows of razor sharp teeth being shown to him. Naruto swallowed thickly at the thought of becoming Godzilla's chew toy. We lived in harmony together for several years and had thousands of eggs produced, Godzilla said looking up in the clear blue sky closing his eyes as if remembering a distant memory, but we had to be cautious every day because the humans were searching for us. Naruto was surprised by this, he was being hunted down because of what he is, just like him, but he has been running and hiding his whole life and who knows how long that has been. One day my mate went out to sea in search of food, it has been weeks since she left and I was getting worried so I went out looking for her but what I found would be forever engraved in my mind. She was killed, apparently she accidentally stumbled across the humans and they killed her, there was nothing left of her but her bones, at this point a single tear fell from Godzilla's eye, I mourned for my loss for days, she didn't deserve to die she didn't kill the humans, it was me that killed them not her. A few tears fell from Naruto's eyes too, he found happiness only for it to be taken away from him just like that. Naruto could sympathize with him, he could remember the day when the Sandame Hokage was killed. He was the closest thing he could come by as a grandfather to him. He has always been there for him when he was lonely or needed a friend to talk to. Having him close by to him was the greatest feeling he ever felt. He made him feel like as if he was someone important, but when he was killed during the invasion that feeling disappeared completely there was nothing there, just an empty void, cold and dark, but when he met Ba-chan and Aero Senen that void slowly starts to disappear, they became his family. Ba-chan was like a mother to him and Aero Senen was like an uncle he never had, without them, he doesn't know what hell do, coming out of his thoughts he continues to listen to Godzilla's story. When I was done mourning her death I looked towards the area I knew where the human's island resides. With my mind made up I headed to their island, they killed her in cold blood and so I shall do the same to them. Blood for blood, Godzilla growled out loudly, I came upon their city and I started destroying it, killing everyone in the city, they tried stopping me with their army but it was useless as I had already smashed through their defenses, their city was engulfed in a giant inferno. Godzilla then let loose a thunderous roar shaking the ground around them, when Godzilla stopped roaring he continued his tale. Knowing that my mate has been avenged I left the city to its demise never to be bothered by the humans again, Godzilla said. And what of the eggs, what happened to them? Naruto asked, he was really getting into story. The eggs were well protected and taken care of, Godzilla replied with a small smile on his face. His face turned back into a neutral one and stares at Naruto causing him to gulp loudly, if you have indeed signed my contract I suppose I should give you a test of some sort right? That's how it usually works. I had to stay on top of Gamabunda's head all day for him to recognize me as his summoner, Naruto said grimacing at the thought of that day, staying on top of Gamabunda's head was the hardest test he has ever done but he has passed it regardless, so whatever test Godzilla has for him he will pass it with flying colors, but what Godzilla had planned for him was the last thing he would expect. I am going to go through your memories to see if you are worthy to be summoner, Godzilla said as he leans in closer to Naruto and stares at him in the eyes, Naruto gulped at that. Godzilla wanted to go through his memories to see if he was worthy to be his summoner. Naruto quickly steeled himself not wanting to show Godzilla any weakness, he gave him a curt nod giving the okay to start the test. Godzilla's eyes changed from yellow to bright blue ones. His eyes began to glow very brightly, Naruto's did the same thing too. Godzilla went through his memories starting at the time he was born. As he goes through each and every memory that Naruto has he couldn't help himself but feel his anger rise higher and higher after each memory he's seen. The way the villagers treated him by kicking him out of shops. Selling him extremely low quality products to even kicking him out of the orphanage when he started walking and have him living on the streets with no shelter. Godzilla was extremely surprised that he didn't lose his sanity and let his tenant take over his body. It seems to him that only four people out of the whole village that holds thousands ever truly cared for him. But even with those four Naruto wasn't truly happy. What Naruto needed the most was a real family that loves him. After going through 13 years of his memories he sees Naruto's life started to change for the better. He finally became a shinobi and was put on a team with his crush that pretty much treats him like shit. He was going to have to break him out of that, but the boy with black hair that was in the shape of a duck's ass interests him, 
he watches Naruto go on a mission to wave all the way to the Chunin exams, he was fascinated by how Naruto beat the Ichibi Jinchuriki and the Ichibi himself. He's going to have a long talk with him about fucking around with people's minds to even make them have insomnia, but everything went downhill for Naruto after the invasion was over, he just lost someone extremely precious to him during the invasion, apparently the leader of the village was like a grandfather to him and losing him was a big blow to Naruto's heart. Naruto was then sent on a mission to find a new leader for his village. The white-haired man that Godzilla deemed him enough to be called a super pervert was teaching him a new jutsu that only two people knew. Naruto surprised the white-haired man by mastering the jutsu in two weeks when it took him six months to master and the person who taught it to him three years. They rented a hotel to stay the night in, the man Naruto was traveling with leaves Naruto alone in the hotel telling him to try and do the Rasengan without the aid of his cage bunshin while he goes and gather information on the person they are looking for. Not ten minutes later two men wearing black cloaks with red clouds show up at the door asking Naruto to come with them. They fought for a while and Naruto was about to be taken until his male teammate shows up and attacks the man who looks like him. Sasuke was taken out with little effort from the older man and drops Sasuke down on the ground unconscious. Just as they were about to grab Naruto the white-haired man showed up and traps them in some jutsu that traps them inside of a toad's stomach. But they got away. Naruto asked Jiraiya who they were and he replied saying they are from an organization called Akatsuki who are out to capture all nine bijus, a janin from the leaf who Godzilla is absolutely terrified of with the bowl cut hair, sparkling teeth and the green spandex suit and that's saying something, the man took Sasuke back to the village, so Naruto and Jiraiya continue their search for the new leader. They came to a town and found the person they were looking for, she has long blonde hair and had a bust that would have men on their knees drooling. Well apparently that's what the white haired man was doing now. She had a black hair assistant that travels with her whose name is Shizune. They went to a bar nearby and talked about her coming back to the village and become the Hokage which she bluntly refuses by saying it's a fool's job. Naruto took offense to this since the Sandame Hokage was just killed protecting his village from Orochimaru and the Yandaimi Hokage stopping the Kayubi from annihilating Konoha. They stepped outside where Naruto was beaten down badly, Naruto tried using the Rasengan on her only for her to grab his wrist and slam the Jutsu into the ground disrupting it. She made a bet with him saying that she would give him the necklace that is around her neck if he could do the Rasengan with only one hand in one week. Naruto accepts the bet saying that hell do it in half the time and went off to train. A few days later apparently Orochimaru came to the town looking for Tsunade and asks her to heal his arms and in return he will revive her loved ones. Tsunade refused his offer and attacks him and his right hand man Kabuto. Godzilla was surprised to see such a strong woman freeze up in the middle of battle when blood was splattered across her face. Kabuto was just about to finish her off until he was kicked away from her by Naruto, Naruto, Jiraiya, and Shizune showed up just in time to save her, Jiraiya went after Orochimaru while Naruto and Shizune went after Kabuto, Kabuto was easily on Kakashi's level in skill and power. He went after Shizune first seeing her as the bigger threat than Naruto. They fought for a while until Shizune was knocked out by him. Kabuto easily beat Naruto back and went after Tsunade to kill her but just as his fist was about to connect it was blocked by Naruto who took the hit instead. Kabuto was so shocked that he missed Naruto forming a Rasengan in one hand and grabs Kabuto's still extended arm preventing him from going anywhere and slams the Rasengan into him sending him flying back towards a boulder rendering the man unconscious from getting hit by the Rasengan, anything else that happened after that was blanked as Naruto was unconscious at the time. Naruto woke up and found himself on a bed. He sits up only to be pulled into a bone crushing hug by Tsunade who was crying with tears of joy, Jiraiya and Shizune walked in and see Naruto struggling to get away from Tsunade's bone crushing hug, smirking Jiraiya walks towards Tsunade and taps her on the shoulder, Tsunade looks over her shoulder towards Jiraiya who is pointing at Naruto, looking back she sees Naruto's face was turning purple and quickly lets go of him. Naruto took in a huge gasp of air after having most of his squeezed out of him. Naruto turns towards the people that are in the room and asks what happened. Jiraiya explained to him that right before Kabuto was blown away by the Rasengan he somehow managed to be able to cut the chakra flow to his heart nearly killing him. But Tsunade saved him and kept him from getting killed by Orochimaru's Kusanagi sword by using her body as a shield. Tsunade finally got over her hemophobia and started beating Orochimaru back. Jiraiya then explains that a summoning battle took place and was able to force Orochimaru to retreat. Then they brought him back to the town so he could rest and that Tsunade never left his bedside for three days that he has been unconscious for. Naruto asked her why she would do such a thing, she replied by saying that he reminds her of someone who was very precious to her and that she didn't want to lose him because he was now precious to her, Naruto jumps out of bed and embraces her, tears flowing freely down his face, 
Tsunade smiles and returns the embrace holding him tightly like a mother would for her child, Jiraiya and Shizun left the room to give them some privacy. Godzilla left that memory alone allowing Naruto to keep some memories private, he wasn't one to go through someone's most private memories without their say. Godzilla then watched everything else that happened from Tsunade returning to Konoha and taking up the mantle as the Godem Hokage all the way to Naruto's and Sasuke's battle at the Valley of the End. They were both in their strongest forms at the time and both summoned their strongest jutsus and they jumped towards each other. Both jutsus slammed into each other both of them trying to overpower the other. Sasuke's Chidori plunges into Naruto's chest while Naruto's Rasengan was heading towards Sasuke's head, but pulled back at the last second only scratching Sasuke's Hide 8. Naruto then falls to the ground unconscious from exhaustion and the wound he received. Naruto then wakes up in the hospital covered in bandages. Naruto was in pain not physically but emotionally he just lost someone who he considered as a brother. Jiraiya appears in Naruto's room from the hospital's window and offer him the chance to become stronger by becoming his apprentice and leave the village for a three-year training trip, Naruto accepted wholeheartedly saying that he would become stronger and bring Sasuke back stating that it's a promise of a lifetime, the exact same promise he made to Sakura right before he left the village to find Sasuke and bring him back. Jiraiya had a solemn look on his face. Jiraiya tells Naruto to forget about Sasuke because he betrayed the village willing and most importantly betrayed his teammates and that he would be a fool to go after him who wants nothing but power and that he would never take in an apprentice who was a fool. Naruto then says that he doesn't need his training that he would get stronger on his own and that he would rather be a fool than to forget someone, smiling at his determination Jiraiya tells Naruto to get ready to leave the village at first light the next day to begin his training. Going through the rest of his memories watching Naruto's training for the next two and a half years all the way to the finding of the summoning contract to talking to him. Godzilla's eyes changed back to their regular yellow colored hue as did Naruto's eyes changed back to their cerulean blue ones, it seemed to have taken forever to them but in reality it had only taken about five seconds, writing himself up Godzilla stares at Naruto for a few seconds before turning around and heads away from Naruto, looking over his shoulder he motions for Naruto to follow him. They walked for about ten minutes until they came upon a forest. Godzilla enters the forest with Naruto trailing closely behind him, they came to huge clearing that was as big as Godzilla himself, Godzilla lies down in the clearing and stares at Naruto who is just standing there looking nervous. Closing his eyes for a brief moment before opening them back up. You have a pure heart not once did I ever feel any hatred while going through your memories, you care very deeply for those you hold close to your heart and are willing to do anything to protect them from harm, you show compassion to everyone even to your enemies so I have no choice but to say that you pass my test and recognize you as being worthy of being my summoner. Naruto was in shock, he passed his test and now he has Godzilla as summon. Alright, I can't wait to tell Aero Senen that I have two summons, Naruto yelled in excitement, but his happy parade was halted by one word. No, how what do you mean no Aaron I your summoner? Naruto inquired with a confused expression. Yes you are my summoner but I won't share my summoner with other summons, and as for your master you won't see him for two and a half years. Godzilla told Naruto laying his head down on the ground. Bug-eyed Naruto screams out what? What do you mean you want share your summoner with other summons and what do you mean by I want see Aero Senen for two and a half years? Looking at Naruto lazily Godzilla calmly replies I mean what I said I mean I want share my summoner with other summons and as for why you want see your master for two and a half years is because you'll be staying here for two and a half years getting trained by me. Naruto looked like a fish out of water, he was going to be trained by his summon for two and a half years. Naruto looks at Godzilla with an expression that says explain now. Seeing his expression Godzilla explained further into his reasoning on why he wants to train Naruto, don't get me wrong your master is a great sensei from what I have seen, teaching you ninjutsu, fuinjutsu, and helping you complete the Rasengan is great and all but there is one thing that he forgot to teach you and that is knowing how to control your emotions. Naruto was thoroughly confused by this, what did he mean by that? I thought having emotions is a good thing, at least that's what Oji-san told him. Yes having emotions is a good thing but learning to control them is even better. For example if you were feeling rage you feel stronger and could deliver more brutal hits but in this rage you charge in blindly leaving yourself wide open for counter attacks. Fear, fear heightens your senses and makes you more aware of what's around you but fear can also make you hesitate and make wrong decisions that could either end with your friends getting hurt or you getting killed. You Godzilla pointed his clawed finger at Naruto, are being ruled by your emotions letting them go wild while not even trying to contain them. For example you could have brought Sasuke back if you wouldn't have pulled back at the last second. You want to know why you did that, fear, you were afraid of what the people in your village would think of you especially that pink haired girl called Sakura would say or more importantly do to you if you brought Sasuke back with his body all mangled. You were also afraid of hurting Sasuke so bad because saw him as a brother and would do anything to prevent him from getting hurt. 
Rage you felt enraged that Sasuke was going to Orochimaru for more power the very same man who killed someone very precious to you. You were so enraged at the prospect of Sasuke going to Orochimaru that you allowed Kayubi's chakra to take over body for a brief moment that nearly killed Sasuke. Godzilla said calmly to Naruto who was hanging his head down in shame because it was all true, it was true Naruto did have the power to bring Sasuke back but didn't because he was afraid, afraid of what the villagers would do to him, and Sakura he was terrified of what she would do, she loves Sasuke so much that if he came back half dead she would have probably ended their friendship, team 7 would have completely fallen apart. You have no reason to be ashamed of what has happened what's done is done nothing can ever change that, Godzilla said to him in a wise tone. Godzilla's eyes shifted to the right towards the trees. Ah my children arrives. Following his gaze to the trees two mini Godzillas came running out of the forest into the clearing. They stopped in front of Godzilla and stares at Naruto hissing and growling at him. Godzilla swats both of the mini Godzillas upside their heads with his tail growling at them. They whimpered and ran back into the forest. Godzilla looks towards Naruto. Sorry about that they have never met a human before and from the tales I have told them about your race, let's just say they don't like your race very much. Naruto nodded dumbly a little apprehensive about the mini Godzillas running about in the forest that surrounds him, how many baby Godzillas did you have? Raising a non-visible eyebrow at his question he answers his question, about 13,000 and they aren't Godzillas until they reach adult form, in their baby form they are called Godzukis the two that you just met are my youngest and eldest sons, Manila and Kaiser and to get things straight my name isn't Godzilla that's my title, my real name is Zilla, but enough of that you need to rest for tomorrow we will begin your training and Kayubi will be helping us also. Inside Naruto's mindscape Kayubi's ears perked up at hearing that he was to train Naruto and shot his head up quickly, why the fuck should I train the brat? Kayubi roared inside Naruto's head giving him a slight migraine. Looking at Zilla Naruto tells him what Kayubi said, Kayubi wants to know why he should train me. It's repayment for attacking Konoha and making Naruto's life a living hell, Zilla told Kayubi knowing that he is listening. And I fucking care why, Kayubi growled, and he cares why, Naruto said to Zilla. You will start caring when I start beating your ass, Zilla said in a dangerous tone. I would like to see you try, Kayubi said, Naruto opened his mouth to relay Kayubi's message, you fucking repeat what I said I swear to Kami nothing will stop me from breaking out of this seal and strangle you, Naruto wisely kept his mouth shut and looks at Godzilla. He agrees, Naruto said and hears Kayubi cursing up a storm in his head. Good now sleep for we start training at first light, Zilla told him as he closes his eyes and falls asleep. Naruto walks over to a patch of grass that looks soft enough to lie down on, he lies down on his back and looks up towards the sky to see that it was no longer daylight, he wonders about what his life would be like now that he has signed a summoning contract that hasn't been seen for ages and has never been signed, Naruto closes his eyes and slowly drifts off to sleep, the shinobi world is about to be shaken to its foundation. Two and a half years later, these past two and a half years has been a living nightmare for Naruto. Zilla and Kayubi were fucking slave drivers. Zilla trains him physically conditioning his body to take more damage and to deliver more punishing blows. For his speed and stamina Zilla has his two sons chase Naruto through the forest for two hours each day and for his stealth skills Zilla sends out about 40 Godzukis to search for him while about 20 of them guards a scroll. Getting past the Godzukis that were looking for him was a piece of cake but getting the scroll was a whole different story. Every time he was about to grab it he was violently slammed down into the ground by the Godzukis who were guarding the scroll. Zilla then has him meditate for two hours having him learn patience because from the memories he has seen Naruto would always charge in first without thinking and coming up with a plan, it was pure luck that Naruto isn't dead yet, but like they always say your luck is bound to run out. When Naruto goes to sleep Kayubi begins his training. They go over battle strategies, ninjutsus, fuinjutsus. And a long forgotten kenjutsu style that Kayubi is teaching him, the style is called staccato, it relies on rapid strikes and extremely fast movement. Kayubi said that once this style is mastered he would be moving at speeds of that of the yellow flash, so Kayubi has him work on the style for two hours and works with him on completing the Rasengan, Naruto had to use a stick to practice the style since there are no swords nearby for him to use. Kayubi even told Naruto the secret behind the cage bunshin no jutsu. Everything the clone learns in its lifetime is transferred back to the original learning everything the clone has experienced. Kayubi was forced to help Naruto with his emotions under the threat of having his ass kicked by Zilla and since Kayubi has access to Naruto's memories he would pull up a memory and have Naruto watch it, every time Naruto was about to be ruled by his emotions Kayubi would give him a massive migraine from which nobody should have to ever experience, they have done this for two years and now Naruto was always calm and calculative, preceding the situation before he does anything rash. With the Godzukis Naruto was able to make friends with the youngest and eldest sons of Zilla. 
Manila reminds Naruto of himself when he was younger. Well besides trying to eat people, Kaiser on the other hand reminds him of Aruka sensei always teaching Manila something and when he does something wrong he gets whacked upside the head. But what confused Naruto the most was why they aren't talking to him, so he brings this up with Zilla. Zilla says that the reason why they don't speak to him is because they can't, they have never been around a human long enough to learn their language and Zilla didn't see any reason to teach them the human language but they can understand him perfectly well, so Naruto had to learn how to communicate with them instead. After Naruto finished his two and a half years of training he packs his things to get ready to go back to his world, Naruto stands before Zilla and his two sons. So I guess this is goodbye then huh? Naruto said sadly, Zilla and his children became like family to him and it hurts him to say goodbye. Seeing his saddened expression Zilla walks up to Naruto and nuzzles him with his nostrils, it's Zilla's way of giving Naruto a hug, Naruto is like a son to him, looking into Naruto's innocent blue eyes Zilla said, it pains us to see you go to Naruto but there is nothing left for us to teach you, you are strong enough to be on your own but before you depart back to the human world I decided to give you a gift. A gift? Naruto asked, surprised that he was receiving a gift from the king of all monsters. Yes a gift that you shall use to protect your soul mate the one that shall be with you for all eternity but it would only activate when she is in mortal danger, Zilla told him. A gift that he could use to protect his soul mate, what brought this up for Zilla to give him such a gift? If I may ask what have I done to receive such a humble gift? Naruto inquired. Zilla smiled at Naruto before replying, you have known lost and loneliness as I have known, if it weren't for my children I would have destroyed the world from the loss of my mate and my family to the humans. I shall give you a gift that will prevent you from losing your soulmate like I lost mine. Naruto gets on his knees and bows before Zilla, I would be honored to receive such a gift from you Zilla-sama. Please no formalities they make me feel old, Zilla told him. But you are old Zilla-sama, Naruto said with a shit-eating grin on his face. That is too true Naruto, Zilla said with a laugh, Zilla leans closer to Naruto and exhales a light blue mist around Naruto. The blue mist then slowly starts being absorbed into Naruto's body. Once the blue mist was completely gone Naruto stands back up and smiles at them. Thank you for your generous gift and now I shall be going, Naruto said turning around and was about to leave the land that they were on but only to be stopped by something pulling on his shirt. Turning around he sees Manila was the one pulling on his shirt, I am sorry Manila but I can't stay with you. Actually Naruto they are going with you, Zilla said with a smirk on his face. What? Naruto screamed out, he was letting them come with him to his world. That's right I am sending Manila and Kaiser with you to the human world as your familiars, they will become your guardians, Zilla said turning back around and heads into the forest leaving Naruto and the two Godzukis alone. Turning towards the two Godzukis Naruto with a smile says, well shall we get going? The two Godzukis squealed in excitement and ran off with Naruto to the human world. One mile south of Kumo's abandoned factory, a head with yellow spiky hair pops out of the ground, Naruto looks around his surroundings and sees that it was all clear. He digs himself out of the ground followed by the two Godzukis behind him, breathing in deeply, Naruto exhales with a satisfied look on his face, man it feels good to be back. Naruto then felt a huge chakra spike coming from the north of his position, he took off in that direction to investigate the chakra spike, he came to a factory that seems to have been abandoned for quite some time, a huge ball of fire suddenly burst from the ceiling, Naruto quickly runs into one of the many pipes that leads into the factory, once he got inside his eyes narrowed dangerously at what he sees, two men wearing black cloaks with red clouds. Akatsuki Naruto thought angrily before taking deep breaths calming himself down before he does something stupid. He looks past them and sees a blonde haired girl who looks to be in her mid twenties hanging on a wall with her hands above her head pierced to it. Naruto summoned two more Godzukis quietly and told them attack the Akatsuki members from the pipes, they nodded their heads before taking off to complete their task, Naruto then looks back at the scene before him, he knows he can't take the Akatsuki on yet, he'll give them a run for their money but he will still be defeated, he heard one of the members say capture of the Nibi Jinchuriki is a success. So she's a Jinchuriki of the Nibi ha I have to get her away from them. Naruto thought as he watches one of the Akatsuki members walk up to her. Naruto's head started to hurt a bit and unknowing his eyes started to turn into a vibrant glowing sky blue color. His head started hurting more and more the closer the man got to her. The man stopped his approach to her and looks towards the pipes, the two Godzukis from before came out of the tunnels and the man backs away from her. Naruto's headache slowly started going away the farther the man moves away from her and his eyes returning to their regular cerulean blue color, shaking his head Naruto thought, that was strange, putting the thought aside for now he focuses on the battle that was about to take place before him. Seeing the Akatsuki members keeping their attention on the Godzukis before them, he sends Manila and Kaiser down to attack them from behind, the man with the mask turned around just in time to kick Manila away from him before getting rammed by the other Godzuki. 
Naruto waited for his chance to grab the girl and when that chance came he shunshined down to her, he looks at the damage done to her and was surprised that she was still alive, hang on I am here to help you, I am getting you out of here, Naruto told her. End flashback, and the rest you already know about, Naruto told Yugito who just stared at him gobsmacked, Naruto chuckles at her expression, for some odd reason he feels at ease just being around her, like as if the whole weight of the world was lifted off of his shoulders, Naruto looks up at the sky to see that it was late at night, we should get some rest before heading out for Kiri, we'll need our strength for tomorrow, Naruto told her as he went about to set up camp. Once camp was all set Naruto placed his sleeping bag outside while he places Yugito's inside the tent, he then looks towards Yugito, you can sleep in the tent Yugito-chan, Naruto told her with a smile. She looks at him like he was stupid, it's your tent you should be the one to sleep in it and ill sleep outside. Nah I prefer to sleep outside it's more peaceful out here than in there. Naruto told her staring at the starry night sky above them. Shrugging her shoulders she went inside the tent to sleep, as she was lying down she couldn't stop thinking about the man outside, you are one strange person, Naruto were Yugito's final thoughts before drifting off to the realm of dreams. Outside of the tent Naruto could hear Yugito's breathing become steady telling him that she's fast asleep. Naruto made three cage bunchons to keep watch throughout the night while they rested, rolling over to his side Naruto was thinking about his soulmate. I wonder what she'll look like and when he'll be able to meet her. Naruto thought as a smile came across his face, closing his eyes he too drifted off to sleep to the realm of dreams, what he doesn't know is that he has already met his soulmate and she's a lot closer to him than he thinks. Akatsuki base, Kakuzu was violently thrown against the wall, a man with spiky orange hair stares at Kakuzu, his Rinnegan eyes staring coldly at him. This man is known as Pain and was the Akatsuki's leader. Kakuzu came back to the Akatsuki's lair empty handed and tells Pain that he has lost the Nibi Jinchuriki and his partner was killed, let's just say that Pain didn't take the news very well. How could you lose the Nibi Jinchuriki when you and Hidan had her within your grasp? Pain asked in a monotone voice. Slowly getting up Kakuzu looks at his leader, we were attacked by some strange creatures that we have never seen before, I was knocked out while Hidan was ripped to pieces, by the time I came to I only saw one man and I couldn't get a good look at him before he took off with the Nibi Jinchuriki. Kakuzu said grunting in pain from the jutsu pain used on him. Pain turned around and walked up to another man who was also there with them, your new partner will be Toby, he's our newest recruit and you will show him how our organization works. A man wearing an orange swirl patterned mask revealing only his right eye, he was also wearing the same cloaks as Kakuzu and the leader are wearing showing that he is a part of Akatsuki, he steps forward and in a very cheerful voice says, hi I am Toby, I am glad to be a member of the Akatsuki and I am looking forward to working with you. I am sure well become the best of friends. Twitching his eyebrow Kakuzu looks at his leader, can I kill him? No pain said simply, and since the Nibi Jinchuriki can't be found right now you are being given a new target, you will go after the Sanbi Jinchuriki that was found in Mizu no Kuni and capture him. Pain then turned towards Kakuzu and stares at him coldly, if you fail in acquiring the Sanbi you'll find out firsthand why I am called God, he said before disappearing into the shadows. A little shaken from what Pain said to him Kakuzu looks at Tobi, come on Tobi let's go. Kakuzu said to him leaving the Akatsuki's base. Yes, let's go and find out who put a dent in my plans, Tobi thought darkly before running after Kakuzu yelling for him to wait up. Yugito woke up the next day with a pleasant sigh, she just had the best night's sleep she ever had since she went with Naruto to Kiri. Slowly getting out of the sleeping bag she slept in. She stretches her body out in a way that a cat would after sleeping long periods of time. She grabs her clothes that she neatly folded last night and set it next to her sleeping bag. She puts them back on since she only sleeps with her bra and panties on, deciding that she will take a dip in the lake nearby, she grabs a scroll from her pouch and unseals a spare set of cloths, she exits the tent and walks towards the lake, if Yugito had been paying more attention to her surroundings she would have noticed that Naruto wasn't in his sleeping bag. After walking for about 5 minutes she arrives at the lake, setting the spare set of clothes down on a fallen tree she strips herself down naked. She looks down at the seal on her stomach, the one that holds the nibby back. She notices something different about it, taking a closer look at it she sees an additional seal was placed on top of the seal that holds the nibi. She recognizes it as a gobyo fuin, the reason why she recognizes it was because she has been on the receiving end of one a few times when she was training with Karabi on controlling her biju, it's a sealing jutsu that blocks the flow of chakra in the target's body and messes up their chakra control, it was mostly used on Jinchuriki by preventing them from using their biju's chakra. The Akatsuki must be placed it on her to prevent her from using her biju's chakra when she was unconscious. As to how she didn't notice this before shell never know but it's a good thing that she has near perfect chakra control, otherwise she wouldn't be able to do this, holding her hand out purple flames appears on her fingertips, 
The five purple flames had a kanji for an element on each of her fingers, metal, wood, water, fire, and earth. Knowing what must be done she prepares herself as releasing the seal placed on her would be extremely painful. Gogyo Kayan. She then slams the seal into her stomach, she let out a silent scream as she releases the Gogyo Fuan that was placed on her, it felt like a thousand hot needles were piercing her skin. About five seconds later the pain subsided, looking down at her seal she sees that the Gogyo Fuan has been removed, sighing in relief that the seal was gone she mentally said, Nibi Chan are you there? Kitten are you okay? I've been trying to get a hold of you for two weeks now, the Nibi asked her container worriedly. I am fine Nibi Chan it seems the Akatsuki placed a Gogyo Fuan on me to cut the connection between us. Yugido told her as she gets up off of the ground as she has fallen to her knees from the excruciating pain she got from removing the seal. Walking towards the lake's shore she dives in only to resurface a few yards away from where she dived in. Yugido let out a sigh of satisfaction, it's been a while since she had any time to herself as she was constantly on missions back home. Swimming towards the center of the lake she thought to her tenant, Hey Nibi Chan is everything okay with you? Of course everything is okay I am just trying to figure out how you got away. Seeing as I am not extracted from you and you are not dead. So you wouldn't mind me asking on how we got away, because from what I can remember was that we were getting our ass handed to us by the Akatsuki. Nibi questioned her container. Floating on her back now Yugito explained everything to Nibi on what happened and how Naruto saved her. Nibi was surprised that someone would risk their neck just to save a Jinchuriki that no one likes. I would very much like to meet this person called Naruto who rescued you from the Akatsuki, Nibi said. All right, but right now I would like to relax for a bit before we arrive at Kiri. Yugido mentally said to her tenant, Nibi knowing how exhausted she must be from fighting the Akatsuki and then be on the run for two weeks straight let her be. Still floating on her back Yugido closed her eyes and relaxes her body, letting her body float around the lake, she stayed like this for about 10 minutes until she felt her head bump into something soft, opening her eyes she looks above her to see what she bumped into and much to her horror she bumped into Naruto who was meditating on top of the lake, seeing him opening his eyes Yugido quickly dives underwater and stays there. Feeling something bumping into him, Naruto looks behind him to see the water rippling all around him, he shrugs his shoulders as he thought that it must have been a fish that hit him, he turns back around and went back to meditating, Naruto woke up early so he can meditate on the lake nearby their camp, it was a good way to practice chakra control while meditating on top of the water at the same time, closing his eyes he went back to meditating. Yugido slowly breaks the water's surface, only her head remained visible, Yugido counted herself lucky that he didn't see her as she was still fully nude. Nibi feeling Yugito's slight distress looked at the blonde haired man that Yugito was slowly swimming away from, the man in front of them was hot, he gets a perfect 10 in her book. Who's the hunk kitten? Nibi asked with a purr, that would be Naruto, Yugito replied trying to get away from him as quickly and quietly as possible. So this is the Naruto that saved my kitten from the Akatsuki, he deserves a reward, Nibi thought seductively. Yugito was almost to the lake's shore, she was glad that Naruto hasn't noticed her presence, but unfortunately for her, her luck just ran out, just as she got out Manila ran right past her and jumps into the lake with a huge splash, the noise of the splash was loud enough to disturb Naruto from his meditating. Groaning in annoyance as he just couldn't meditate properly with so many distractions. He gets up and walks towards the lake's shore but stops when he sees Yugito standing on the lake's shore fully nude. He quickly closes his eyes and continues walking towards the lake's shore. He's not stupid to look at a naked woman who doesn't want to be seen nude unless he has a death wish. I mean look at Jiraiya he constantly looks into the women's side of the hot springs and gets his ass beat for it every time, how he was still alive Naruto will never know, feeling the dirt beneath his feet with his eyes still closed he looks in the direction he thinks Yugito was in, we break camp in an hour, Naruto told her as he walks back to their campsite. Yugito has no idea what just happened, he just had the perfect opportunity to get a good look at her naked body, but soon as he saw what state she was in he quickly closes his eyes and avoided looking at her, most men would have killed just to see her nude but Naruto didn't and told her that they were breaking camp an hour while keeping his eyes closed, Naruto just earned himself a few points in her book. Courageous and chivalrous he is perfect for you kitten, Nibi told Yugito who groaned in annoyance by Nibi's comment. When are you going to stop trying to hook me up with a guy? Yugito asked her tenant. When you get a boyfriend and get laid, that's when he'll stop, Nibi said with a feral grin on her face as Yugito face faulted. Just shut the hell up Nibi, Yugito mentally screamed. Nibi could be heard snickering at her container's reaction to her comment, a thought crosses Nibi's mind as her grin became even more feral. Why don't you try hooking up with that Naruto guy kitten? He looks like he can give you one hell of a ride in bed, Nibi said to Yugito while sending images of her and Naruto having sex, Yugito's face turned so red that it looked like her head was going to explode, she quickly cuts the connection with Nibi, 
her face still red Yugito walks over to her spare set of clothes and puts them on. After she was fully clothed again she walks back to camp with Manila at her side who decided that he had enough fun swimming. Yugito arrives at the campsite to find a bear of their camping equipment. Naruto was just putting the fire out when he noticed Yugito. You all ready to go Yugito-chan? Naruto asked as he puts a scroll away. Yugito only nodded her head and they left the area. Right when they left their campsite Kaiser jumps out of nowhere and attacks Manila. When Yugito first saw this she thought that they were trying to kill each other. But after seeing it so many times she now knows it's their way of having fun. But now it seems like Kaiser was trying to maim Manila, probably from trying to find him all day but only to find out that he found his way back. Naruto and Yugito only stood there and watched Kaiser try to maim Manila only for him to find his head stuck in the bark of a tree. Yugito tried to suppress her laughter while Naruto was full blown out laughing at Kaiser. Manila even seems to be laughing at Kaiser's predicament. Hearing Naruto and Manila laughing at him, Kaiser turns into one of rage, he breaks the tree in half with brute force thus freeing him, he turns towards Naruto and Manila. Kaiser extends his claws and a dangerous glint could be seen in his eyes. Naruto and Manila ceased their laughter when they saw this. Naruto and Manila gulped loudly before looking at each other. Well Manila it was nice knowing you, Naruto said while shaking the Godzuki's hand, Manila nods his head probably saying the same thing to him too. Soon as Naruto lets go of Manila's clawed hand he turns around and hauls ass while screaming, every man for himself. Seeing that he just got ditched, he turns around and hauls ass too with Kaiser following closely behind them, roaring all the way. Yugito couldn't hold it in anymore and she was rolling on the ground laughing. Screams of pain could be heard in the distance which only serves for Yugito to laugh harder as she now knows that Naruto and Manila were caught. At least things would never be dull around those three haha, Yugito thought to herself with a smile. Fifteen minutes later Naruto and Manila comes back to the area where they left Yugito. Both of them sporting bruises and cuts, Yugito looks at Naruto's arm to see that it looked like it was used as a chew toy from the various teeth marks on it. Kaiser comes back too with a look of satisfaction on his face, Naruto sits down on the tree that Kaiser ripped in half, wincing in pain from having his ass repeatedly whipped by Kaiser's tail, seriously, getting hit by that thing feels like he was getting hit by a wooden paddle that would never break, looking up he sees Yugito smirking at him. What? Naruto asked while rubbing his sore ass, he was glad that his arm was already healed, now he knows how Hidan feels when he was being used as a chew toy, it wasn't fun. Now you know not to make fun of others and not to ditch your friends too, Yugito said to him, her smirk grew even bigger when she saw Manila perk his head up when he heard the last part, remembering that he was ditched by Naruto he glares menacingly at him, Naruto seeing this slowly backs away from him while waving his arms defensively. Now, now, Manila were bros for life man you wouldn't want to hurt your bro now would you? Naruto said nervously as Manila stalks closer to him growling all the a while. Aw oh shit. Was all Naruto could say as Manila jumps on him and proceeds to maim him. Screams of pain were heard once again. Now sporting new bruises and cuts Naruto glares at Yugito who only smiles innocently at him. Still glaring at her he says, I hate you. Ah don't be mean Naruto-kun he was only playing with you, Yugito said while scratching Manila behind the head. Manila was purring in pure bliss from the attention he was receiving. Naruto-kun? Where did that come from? Naruto mentally thought, he filed it away for another time, he continues to glare at her, you call nearly having both of your legs ripped off playing, it's going to take Kyubi at least an hour to heal my legs, Naruto stated while looking at his mauled legs, Manila sure did a number on him. Well you should nt have ditched Manila then huh, Yugito told him with an innocent smile, all Naruto could do was glare at her while Kyubi heals his legs so that they could get going. Naruto then suddenly grinned as an idea came to him, Yugito didn't like that grin on Naruto's face, from past experience whenever Karabi grins like that it usually means trouble, what are you planning Naruto? Yugito questioned with narrowed eyes. Oh, nothing, Naruto said as his grin grew even larger that it threatens to split his face in half, hey Manila, Naruto said catching the Godzuki's attention, did you know that if you lick Yugito-chan's skin that it would taste like fish? Naruto told him causing Yugito's eyes to widen. Realizing where he was going with this Yugito tries to get away but unfortunately she wasn't quick enough, before she could get away she was tackled to the ground by Manila who then proceeded to give her the licking of a lifetime. Five minutes later Yugito was glaring daggers at Naruto who was clutching his side in pain from laughing so hard. After Yugito finally got Manila off of her she was pissed beyond anything and for good reasons too, she was covered in Manila's slobber and her hair was sticking out everywhere, focusing her chakra around her body she quickly burns the slobber off. Walking over to the laughing Naruto she kicks him in the shin, hard, Naruto immediately shuts up after that as that kick really hurt. Now if you are done laughing may we get going because Akatsuki isn't going to wait forever to capture the Sanbi, Yugito told him. Alright, 
All right fine well go geez. You don't know how to take a joke do you, Naruto said as he walks next to her. Yugito remains silent and continues to walk beside her fellow Jinchuriki. The next few hours were uneventful for the two Jinchuriki, Kirigakir no Sato truly lives up to its name. The mist gets thicker and thicker the closer they get the village, people would easily get lost in this mist if they don't know their way around, right now Naruto couldn't even see 30 feet in front of him. Yugito chan stay close we can't afford to get lost in this mist as we will never find our way back out of it, Naruto told her. Tell me something that I already don't know, Yugito sarcastically said to him while rolling her eyes. Eero Senen is the author of the Icha Icha series, Naruto told her with mirth, Yugito face faulted at that as she really didn't know that he was the author of that smut. Kaiser and Manila who were ahead of them suddenly stopped, both of them started growling. Naruto quickly appeared in between them with a serious face shocking Yugito greatly that he went from a happy-go-lucky guy to a man that looked like he has been through many wars. How many up ahead Kaiser? Naruto asked him keeping his eyes straight ahead trying to see through the thick mist. Kaiser claws the ground with his feet eight times but stops halfway through the ninth one. So eight potential enemies possibly nine those errant very good odds. Naruto thought to himself while glancing around the mist. I can handle myself just fine in this mist but I seriously doubt that she is used to fighting with limited visibility, Naruto mentally thought while glancing over his shoulder at Yugito who was looking at him expectantly, looking at the Godzukis beside him he tells them to go into hiding until he calls for them, Kaiser and Manila quickly digs themselves underground disappearing completely, Naruto walks over to Yugito who gave him a questionable look. Where did they go? Yugito asked pointing at the two human sized holes in the ground. I told them to go into hiding until I call for them as we have 8 possibly 9 potential enemies heading this way, Naruto told her as he prepares himself for battle which he was really hoping to avoid, Yugito was not happy about him sending his two familiars away when they could be a huge asset if a fight happens, but he must have a good reason for doing it so she won't question him why he did that, sensing 8 chakra signatures approaching fast she gets herself ready for battle. 8 Kiri Nins appeared in front of them with their weapons drawn, the seemingly leader of the group walks towards the two Jinchuriki. State your purpose for being here in Kiri quickly or we will use lethal force, the man said with authority gripping his ninja to tightly readying himself in case they were a threat to his village, Naruto slowly walks forward with his hands held up in the air as a sign that he was unarmed. We came here to seek an audience with your cage as we have valuable information regarding the safety of the Sandy Jinchuriki, Naruto told him, shocked gasps were heard from the Kiri Nin that were before them. What do you mean by that? the leader asked. There is a group of S-class missing nin called Akatsuki who are hunting down Jinchurikis and capturing them so they can extract the biju inside of them, the Akatsuki are heading here to capture the sandy Jinchuriki and they will do anything to capture him, her, Naruto told him, the leader glances over his shoulder and gives a slight nod to the other kiri nin, the kiri nin sheaths his ninja to and turns around. Follow us well take you to see the mizukage, the leader said before running off into the thick mist followed by the other kiri nins. Looking towards Yugito Naruto nods his head in the direction the Kiri Nin took off in before taking off after them followed closely by Yugito. They traveled through the mist for about 10 minutes following the Kiri Nins who were guiding them to their village, Naruto and Yugito could see that the mist was letting up, about another minute later the mist was completely gone, Naruto and Yugito were completely amazed by what they are seeing. Play is sent by James Dooley. There before them was Kirigakir no Sato, its massive walls towering high above them, it was even taller than Konoha's walls. The village's gates were made of iron making it extremely hard to break through, looking at their escorts Yugito asks. Ensong. Has your village ever been successfully invaded before? Yugito asks still looking at the village in awe. No our village has never been successfully invaded before, the leader said with pride, we are unlike other villages that are both military and civilian villages, our village is purely a military one, the Kiri Nin told them. So you have no civilians at all? Naruto asked him while they approached the massive iron gates. Oh we do have civilians here in our village just not very many, we have maybe around 7000 civilians, he answered. What's the population of your village? Yugito inquired. 40,000, the man bluntly replied, this caused both Yugito and Naruto's eyes to widen. They have a military force of about 33,000 shinobis, that was about twice as big as their village's military force was. No wonder why they have never been successfully invaded. The invaders would have to get past their walls first which would be extremely difficult to do without suffering heavy casualties, and once they get past the wall they would have to defeat Kiri's army in order to successfully take control of the village, invading Kiri would practically be suicide. That would have been our population had we not lost one fourth of it, the man told them as he approaches the guards at the village's gates. Welcome back Zuka-san how goes your patrol, one of the guards asked him. Our patrol went well, there were no sightings of the rebel faction, Zuka told him. 
Who are the foreigners? The guard inquired looking at Naruto and Yugito. We came across them during our patrol they have valuable information. Zuka leans into the guard's ear and whispers what he was told by Naruto. The guard's eyes widen exponentially, looking behind him he yells. Open the gates. Several loud clicks could be heard behind the iron gate, a creaking noise was heard as the massive gate began to open, the gate opens up wide enough for Naruto and Yugito to walk in along with Zuka and his patrol unit, once they were all inside the gate closed shut and could hear the gate locking back up. While they walked through the village Naruto and Yugito got a good look at it, the village was in poor condition, there were buildings and homes that looked to have been caught on fire, people were seen roaming the streets in ragged cloths, the children were skinny from being malnourished. The state the village was in reminded Naruto so much of what Nami used to be in when Gato was in control. Yugito covered her mouth in horror at what she was seeing. Wa well, what happened here? She asked. Zaku had a solemn look on his face. The rebels did this, Zuka said waving his hand in the direction of the burnt homes. They have also blocked off most our trading and shipping routes preventing us from getting supplies in. Thus causing food and water shortages, Zuka said grimly. That's horrible. Yugito exclaimed. Zuka nodded his head in agreement. Yes it is horrible, the rebels even made off with one fourth of our military force, Zuka told them, they continued to through walk the village in complete silence, they walk up to a huge tower that was in the middle of the village that looks similar to the Hokage tower in Konoha. This must be where their Mizukage is, Naruto thought to himself as he and Yugito walk inside with Zuka who told his patrol unit to go home to their families, they walk up to the secretary who was a middle aged man with short brown hair and brown eyes, noticing their presences he asked. Zuka san how can I help you? The man asked, I need to see Mizukage sama it's very important, Zuka told him. He is downstairs in the dojo training, the secretary told Zuka. Zuka bowed to the man giving him his thanks and walks downstairs with Naruto and Yugito following closely behind him. Zuka stops at a door, fighting could be heard on the other side of it, Zuka knocks on the door. The fighting that they heard stopped, sensing something approaching the door fast. Naruto grabs Zuka and pulls him away from the door in time as a body was sent flying through it. Come in, a young voice was heard, giving Naruto his thanks for pulling him out of the way Zuka walks inside. Naruto and Yugito walked inside with him to see a room that was 60 feet in length and 40 feet in width. The walls were painted with a dark blue color with various weapons on it, in the center of the room of the room stood a young boy who was standing at 55, he has a bored expression on his face. He has messy gray hair with pink pupil less eyes, there was a stitch like scar running from underneath his left eye all the way down to his cheek. He has on a gray undershirt with short mesh sleeves that has the metal plate of Kirigakure Hite aid sewn onto it. He was wearing a green poncho with a turquoise sash wrapped around his waist with a green indument over his pants. He was also wearing brown boots that are open on the back. Looking at the newcomers, the young boy asks, Who are your friends, Zuka san? Zuka bows down before the boy. They are foreigners, Mizukage sama. We came across them during our patrol. They have some. Zuka pauses for a moment looking behind him where Naruto and Yugito stood before continuing, disturbing information, Zuka finished. Looking past Zuka he stares at the two Jinchuriki behind him, walking up to them he extends his hand out, I am Yugura the Yandaimi Mizukage, Yugura emotionlessly said. I am Naruto and this here is Yugito chan, Naruto told him as he shook the Mizukage's hand. After their introductions Yugura steps back and looks at Zuka, Zuka san would you mind in finding me another sparring partner? The one I had didn't even last a whole minute with me. As you wish, Mizukage sama, Zuka said as he shunshins out of the dojo to find Yugura another sparring partner. I could be your new sparring partner, Naruto said to him in excitement. It's not every day that you could spar against another country's cage, plus, he wanted to see how much he has grown, and the only way to do that was to fight someone stronger than him. Looking at his guest with a raised eyebrow, you want to be my sparring partner? Yugura questioned. Naruto only nodded his head. Looking at Naruto for a few seconds more he turns around and walks onto the training mat, standing in the middle of the mat Yugura looks at him, very well I wonder how long you will last against me, Yugura stated emotionlessly. Kitten he is much stronger than he looks you have to let Naruto-kun know not to underestimate him otherwise hell end up flying through the wall in the same way as the other guy did. Nibi told Yugito, Yugito mentally nodded as she could practically feel the young Mizukage's power rolling in waves all around him, putting her hand on Naruto's shoulder who was taking his equipment off. He stops what he was doing and looks at Yugito questionably, be careful Naruto he is a lot stronger than he looks, Yugito warned. Yay, I know otherwise he wouldn't even be the Mizukage, Naruto stated while observing Yugura who was just standing there with a bored look on his face, looking back to Yugito he flashes her with his infamous grin which made Yugito's heart flutter a bit, but thanks for the warning though he'll be careful, Naruto told her with a smile. Once the last bit of equipment was off, 
Naruto walks onto the mat and stands before the Mizukage, so how are we doing this? Naruto asked. We are using Taijutsu only as I don't really want to damage my dojo, Yagura told him. Well I think it's kind of too late for that, Naruto stated while looking at the destroyed entranceway with the man who was surprisingly still there and unconscious. But Taijutsu it is then, Naruto said with a grin, he slowly gets into a stance, his stance was an odd one to Yugito and Yagura. Naruto's left leg was stretched out in front of him while leaning on his right leg, his entire body was facing forward while his arms were stretched out in front of him with his hands open and pointing downwards, ready when you were Yagura, Naruto told him with excitement. Yagura just stands there looking at Naruto weirdly before he suddenly disappears. Surprising Naruto greatly on how fast he was, Yagura appears above Naruto with his cocked back. Sensing Yagura above him Naruto leans forward onto his left leg lifting his whole body up catching the Mizuka off guard. Naruto quickly tries to kick Yagura with his right leg but had it blocked by Yagura's knee. Recovering quickly Naruto tries to hit Yagura with an open palm strike to the chest hoping to at least knock the wind out of him but Yagura saw it coming and quickly smacks the hand away from him. Gaining some distance from him Naruto looks towards Yagura who remained where he was. Naruto goes over what he has seen so far. Okay maybe Yugito chan wasn't kidding when she said he is stronger than he looks, he is also faster than he looks, before he could think on it anymore Yugura went onto the offensive. Yugura disappears yet again but only to appear to the right of Naruto. Yugura does a sidekick to Naruto's body sending him flying back a good 15 feet, but Yugura doesn't stop there, just as Naruto gets up he appears in front of him and delivers a brutal combo of punches and kicks. Yugura finishes his combo with an open palm thrust to the stomach sending Naruto flying back 30 feet, jumping up in the air. Yagura slams the heel of his foot into Naruto's chest causing him to spit out some blood, the power he used in that attack was enough to cause a 10 foot wide crater around Naruto. While this was all going, Yugito, who was on the sidelines, was mortified by what C was seeing, the Yandaimi Mizukage, Yagura, was completely annihilating Naruto in this supposedly friendly sparring match, Yagura isn't pulling any of his punches, Naruto never stood a chance, Yagura was just too strong for him and when Yagura planted his heel into Naruto, she freaked. Naruto. Yugito yelled out, believing the fight to be over, Yugura walks out of the small crater, but before he could get far he heard someone laughing, turning around to where Naruto was, he was extremely surprised to see him standing up, despite the brutal beating he just got, he looks just fine, not even a single bruise was seen on him, narrowing his eyes Yugura asks, how are you still standing? Looking at the Mizukage Naruto simply shrugs his shoulders, I've had worse beatings than that, but I am not going to lie though, those punches and kicks really hurt. Naruto simply stated, getting back into his stance, Naruto face expression was completely neutral, not a single emotion could be seen on his face, shall we take this up a notch? Naruto asked Yagura. Play Tribal Adrenaline by James Dooley, turning around to completely face Naruto, Yagura says, yes, let's. Yagura disappears in a burst of speed again but this time Naruto did not remain idle as he too disappear in a burst of speed. Yugito was surprised by this as she never seen Naruto as a speed type of guy but more of a powerhouse type well he just proved her wrong. Yagura was surprised that Naruto could keep up with him. Throwing a right hook towards Naruto's face, he connected. But he received a vicious jab to his ribs, Naruto does a roundhouse kick only to have it blocked. Yagura does his own roundhouse kick but it was blocked by Naruto, jumping in the air Naruto kicks Yagura away from him. Yagura quickly regains his bearings from the sudden kick, Yagura charges at Naruto in a burst of speed, Naruto catches the punch aimed at his face. Grabbing the hand he caught he spins Yugura around before letting go of him. Yugura's body was thrown at the wall but before he could hit the wall Yugura somehow flips in midair letting his feet hit the wall instead. Using the momentum he has Yugura jumps off of the wall towards the surprised Naruto. Yugura used his small body as a missile and rams into Naruto head first. Naruto was thrown back 5 feet from that as he did not expect Yugura to do something like that. Yugura appears in front of him and head butts him in the face. Naruto stumbles back a bit from the headbutt, a little miffed by the brutal headbutt, Naruto grabs Yugura's arms preventing him from moving, Naruto does his own headbutt on the Mizukage's head, the headbutt was strong enough to throw Yugura back 7 feet. Who has a harder head now bitch? Naruto yelled, blood trickling down his forehead, Yugura looks at Naruto with unbridled rage in his eyes, getting up Yugura engages Naruto in another bout of taijutsu. To the untrained eye people would see nothing but two blurs dancing around each other. But Yugito could see everything that was going on, Naruto was keeping up with Yugura blow for blow. But something didn't seem right to her, Yugura's attacks are becoming more erratic, she also notices that his chakra levels were rising too, the longer the fight goes on the more erratic his attacks become and the higher his chakra rises, 
But before she could say anything about it she saw Naruto get punched in the face. The power behind that punch was enough to send Naruto through the wall and knock him unconscious. End song. Yagura walks over to Naruto and picks him up by the scruff of his shirt. Intending to finish the Uzumaki off for causing bodily harm to him reels his fist back. Seeing what he was about to do Yugito quickly shunshuns in front of Yugura and catches his fist before it connected with Naruto's face. Yugito was extremely surprised by the power the Mizukage put into that punch. He was aiming to decapitate Naruto's head. Yugura grabs Yugito's arm and tosses her across the dojo. Yugito landed gracefully before running back towards the Mizukage who brought his fist back up to decapitate Naruto. I am not going to make it. Yugito thought frantically, closing her eyes to wait for the inevitable sound of flesh hitting flesh but she doesn't hear it. Opening her eyes she was shocked at what she saw. A woman who appears to be in her mid-twenties was holding Yugura's arm back. She has long sky blue hair that was tied up into a single ponytail. Her eyes were bright sea green, she was wearing a sleeveless black shirt that covers up her high sea cup breast all the way down to her slim but toned stomach, she was also wearing loose baggy jeans that have many pockets located all over it to hold scrolls and other tools. The most noticeable thing about her was the sword on her back, it was a five foot blood red katana that has no guard on it and the handle was wrapped up in black tape, she was extremely beautiful. Looking at Yagura the woman only shakes her disapprovingly, Yagura kun I thought this was supposed to be a friendly spar not a fight to the death, Yagura just stares at her for a moment before letting go of Naruto and letting him fall onto the ground unceremoniously. Yugito quickly shunshuns next to Naruto and checks his vitals, seeing that he was still alive she gently lifts his head up and places it on her lap, Naruto took quite a beating, there were bruises and cuts everywhere on his body, nothing that the Kayubi can't heal but the damage was still quite extensive, looking up at the woman who saved Naruto Yugito says, thank you, I wouldn't have been able to stop him in time had it not been for you. Turning her attention to Yugito the woman smiles at her, no problem my fiancé tends to get carried away when he spars, the only people who can actually spar and be on even grounds with him are the seven swordsmen of the mist, she told her while looking at Yugura who looks at her with no emotion on his face. Your fiancé, you mean to tell me he's, Yugito points at Yugura, is your fiancé? Yugito asked her in shock. Yup, we have been engaged for about two years now, the woman said happily, and by the way I am Kara one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. Kara told Yugito who stared at her wide-eyed. Now enough with the introductions I think we should get your boyfriend to the hospital, he looks pretty beat up, Kara said when she sees the damage on Naruto's body. Yeah we need to get him there quick, Yugito stated as she gently picks Naruto unconscious body up, it was not till a few seconds later till she actually heard what Kara said to her, turning towards the smiling woman, he is not my boyfriend, Yugito told her, her face beat red, this only caused Kara to laugh at her, Yugito glares at her. Okay he's not your boyfriend but we should definitely get him to hospital, Kara informed her, Kara turns around to her fiancé to find that he wasn't there anymore, a frown formed on her face but it quickly went away as she turns back around and grabs one of Naruto's arms and put it around her neck, both she and Yugito took Naruto to the hospital via sunshine. Konoha, Hokage Tower it's been 5 years since Naruto left Konoha, Tsunade just finished another stack of paperwork that Shizun brought in, it's been like this since he left with Jiraiya to train. Shizun brings in the paperwork she signs them and that's it, every day it's been the same thing over and over. Tsunade let out a long tire sigh, she just got another letter Jiraiya stating that he and Naruto won't be coming back to Konoha for another two months. The first letter she got from him said that instead of a three year training trip it turned into a four year one, four years came by and Jiraiya asked for another six months to train Naruto, every time on the day they were supposed to come back he would ask for another few months to train him. Looking out the window that overlooks the village she begins to think about Naruto. Where are you Naruto? Konoha isn't the same without you being here causing chaos. Jiraiya better have turned you into another Minato for the amount of time he's been given to train you, if not then let's just say that Jiraiya would lose something that separates him as a man from a woman. Tsunade mused. Hearing her door open, she turns around to see her own apprentice besides Shizun walk in. Sakura has changed quite a bit in the past five years that she has been training her. She was no longer the weak kunyachi that she was back then, Sakura's medical skills were on par with hers and she also has her super strength thanks to her perfect chakra control, the only thing Tsunade couldn't change was the fangirl side of Sakura, she's been bugging her non-stop if she has heard any word about Sasuke or Orochimaru's whereabouts, sitting back down in her chair, leaning back in it she looks at Sakura who stood in front of her, yes Sakura how can I help you? Lady Tsunade, has there been any word about when Naruto comes back home? I mean he was supposed to be back two weeks ago, Sakura asked. Unfortunately Jiraiya requested an additional two months to train Naruto before coming back, Tsunade told her, so I agreed to his request that he'll be. 
Tsunade never got to finish her sentence as Sakura slammed her hands down on the desk cracking it slightly. Why did you do that Lady Tsunade? Naruto needs to come back home so we can hurry up and save Sasuke-kun. Sakura yelled at Tsunade in anger. Tsunade violently stood up knocking the chair backwards into the wall, blaring daggers at Sakura she coldly says, Naruto has bigger problems to worry about than a spoiled snot-nosed Uchiha that doesn't even want to be saved. Sakura shrunk back under Tsunade's scrutinizing gaze. Naruto has an organization of S-class missing nin after him, if he is not strong enough to fight them then how do you think he will bring back your precious Sasuke-kun? Need I remind you that Orochimaru is an S-class missing nin that is probably around Sasuke all the time, how do you plan on getting by him to get to Sasuke? I don't know, Sakura quietly said as what Tsunade said was true, how can they get to Sasuke, Orochimaru would be there to stop them, she just doesn't want to lose Sasuke to that snake. Exactly, you don't know. Now get out of my office and if you come at me like that again I will have your license revoked, do I make myself clear? Tsunade told her. Crystal Lady Tsunade, it won't happen again, Sakura said bowing apologetically and quickly leaves the office in fear of losing her license. Once Sakura was gone Tsunade pulls her chair back and sits down in it, she's gonna have to beat the fangirl out of her, she brings shame to the name of Kunochi everywhere with that attitude of hers signing the letter that Jiraiya sent her that she approves of the extended training time and sent it back to him via messenger bird, her thoughts wanders back to Naruto to who she sees as a son to her. Hurry back Naruto we all miss you, were Tsunade's thoughts, she leaves the office for the night as there was nothing else to do. Kirigakure Hospital Naruto and Yugito have been in the hospital for two days now. Ever since Naruto's spar with the Mizukage he's remained unconscious. The medic nins told Yugito that he has four fractured ribs. A broken arm, a dislocated shoulder, his knuckle bones were completely shattered, internal bleeding, and his windpipe was somewhat crushed, they said that Naruto's shinobi career was over, the next day however baffled them, all of Naruto's injuries were completely healed, his broken and shattered bones mended themselves back to together, his internal bleeding was gone and his windpipe was completely fine, the only thing that hasn't changed yet was his unconscious state. We find Yugito sitting down next to Naruto's bed, she was unconsciously running her hand through Naruto's surprisingly soft unkempt hair with a soft smile on her face, she has not left his side ever since he was in the hospital, for some odd reason she feels drawn to him, like as if he's the world to her, this was the scene that Kara walked in on. You like him don't you, it was more of a statement than a question, Yugito quickly brings her hand back and stares at the woman. I don't like him, it's just, well, I don't know how to exactly explain it, it's like if anything was to happen to him I would be devastated, Yugito told her. Kara grabs a chair and sits down in front of Yugito, sweetie I know exactly how you feel as I went through the same thing with Yugura-kun, Kara told her with a small smile. Kara-san, how old are you and Yugura-san? Yugito inquired. I am 23 and Yugura-kun is 15, Kara said as she started laughing at Yugito's shocked expression. Why is a 15 year old your fiance? Yugito questioned her. Leaning back into her chair Kara says, love works in mysterious ways. But he is too young for you, Yugito stated, Kara shrugs her shoulders, so, life is short for a shinobi as our life expectancy isn't really high, at any time it could be our last in the land of the living, Yugito could understand that as not many shinobi or kunochi die of old age. And as how he became my fiance, well let's just say that he is very good with words and knows how to treat a woman right. Kara said with a grin on her face, Kara's shifts her eyes towards Naruto's body for a split second before returning her gaze back to Yugito. Smiling Kara gets up out of her seat confusing Yugito greatly. Walking towards the door that leads out of the room. She turns around and looks at Yugito, let me offer you a piece of advice. Never let go of what you have as you don't know what you got until it's gone for good. A sad smile comes across Kara's face, I almost lost my future husband because I didn't follow that advice. You remember that scar under Yagura Kun's left eye, Yugito nodded her head as she does remember seeing it. Five years ago Zabuza Momochi, one of the legendary seven swordsmen started a coup d'etat against the Mizukage and attempted to assassinate him. That scar was from Zabuza's sword, Kabikirabocho, he would have succeeded in assassinating him had I not been there to stop the blade from following all the way through to decapitate Yagura's head, ever since then I cherish every moment I have with him as we know at any moment could be our last together, Kara's eyes shifts to Naruto's body again. I believe your friend wants to talk to you in private so it'll take my leave. Kara leaves the room and closes the door behind her with a click. Confused by her words Yugito looks over to Naruto's body, what did she mean that he wanted to talk to me in private, he's not even awake, when Yugito got closer to him the heart rate monitor started rising, realization came to Yugito, he's been pretending to be unconscious the whole time. Yugito mentally fumed, refraining from bashing his skull in, 
She calmly says, How long have you been awake? Opening his eyes, he looks at Yugito in embarrassment that he has been caught, since you stopped stroking my hair, and by the way, you have really soft hands. Naruto complimented with a smile. Yugito blushed in embarrassment that he knew that she was stroking his hair. Naruto's face turned into one of complete seriousness. We have a problem. This caught Yugito's attention. What did he mean by we have a problem? Yugito mentally thought. Catching her confused look, Naruto says, I believe I know who the Sanbi Jinchuriki is. Now that was news to her as they haven't met anyone else besides Kara and the Mizuka Jin less. Seeing Yugito's eyes widen in realization, Naruto confirms it. Yes, I believe Yugura is the Sanbi Jinchuriki as when I was sparring with him, his shirt lifted up enough for me to see underneath it. There is a seal on him similar to what we have. The Mizukaj was the Sanbi Jinchuriki. How is this a problem then? If the Mizukaj the Sanbi Jinchuriki, then this just made it so much easier for us to talk to him as it deals with the safety of his village, Yugito stated. Naruto only shook his head in disagreement. That's the problem. He doesn't care about the safety of the village anymore. Now this definitely threw Yugito for a loop. Judging by how Kara talked about him, he seems to be a very compassionate kind of guy. But during our spar, he didn't show any kind of compassion towards us nor his subordinates. He didn't show an ounce of emotion to us nor did he show any kind of love towards Kara. It was almost like he was in a trance. You mean like a genjutsu was placed on him, Yugito said. Naruto nods his head. Yes, I believe he is under a genjutsu, a very advanced one too. Naruto told her, now this definitely was a problem for them. If the Mizukaj was under an advanced genjutsu, there's no telling what he would do. What should we do then? Yugito asked Naruto, nothing, we can't do anything until we find a way to break the genjutsu that's on him, we know that he is the Sanbi Jinchuriki but we won't tell him that we know he is a Jinchuriki as we don't know how he will react, so until then we do absolutely nothing, Yugito nodded her head in agreement as that would be the best course of action until they find a way to break the genjutsu. Yugito's eyes started drooping a little, she hasn't slept for two days because she was more worried about Naruto than sleeping, now that she knows he was alright she could finally fall asleep. Closing her eyes she quickly falls asleep, seeing this Naruto gets off of the hospital bed and picks Yugito up, he gently lays her down on the bed, pushing a loose strand of hair away from Yugito's face, Naruto smiles softly at her sleeping face, he covers her up. She really does look like an angel, Naruto thought to himself, sitting in the chair next to her, he falls asleep himself as he was still tired from his spar with the Mizukaj, as they slept a plan like figure sinks back into the ground but unbeknownst to the figure a single blue orb was watching as the figure sink into the ground, seeing that the figure was gone it joined its brother in the land of dreams. 157 miles away from Kurigakur, Kakuzu was not having a great day, ever since he was teamed up with Tobi, he would never shut up on how excited he was to be a part of the Akatsuki, throwing a punch at Tobi he narrowly missed as Tobi was just a little too quick for him. Geez, Kakuzu senpei you sure are scary when you're mad, Tobi chirped, Growling in annoyance Kakuzu continues his trek towards Kirigakir opting to ignoring Tobi constant bantering. After another five minutes of non-stop talking Kakuzu has had enough, oh, I can't take it anymore. Fuck what leader Sama said, I am fucking killing him, Kakuzu said as he started going through a sequence of hand seals, just as he was about to land on the last seal needed for the jutsu, Zetsu appears before him. The Nibi Jinchuriki has been found, Dark Zetsu informed them. But there is a slight problem though, White Zetsu said. The Kayubi Jinchuriki has finally showed up and he seems to be protecting her, it will be difficult to get past him, Dark Zetsu told them, Kakuzu stares at Zetsu for a minute before putting his hands back at his side and walk past him. What are you going to do now Kakuzu, now that you know the Nibi Jinchuriki is there? White Zetsu questioned him. Not even bothering to stop he says, my target is the Sandy Jinchuriki not the Nibi Jinchuriki, but if I come across her again, she won't be able to escape me twice, Kakuzu bluntly replied. When Kakuzu was out of hearing range Tobi says, so the Kayubi Jinchuriki finally shows himself after two and a half years. It would appear so and he seems to have grown really powerful, Dark Zetsu told him. He even went toe to toe with the Mizukage in a Taijutsu only spar, White Zetsu said excitedly. But he knows about the Jinjutsu you placed on the Mizukage and he is looking for a way to break it, Dark Zetsu informed him. Madara's eyes narrowed dangerously. If the Kayubi Jinchuriki breaks the Jinjutsu that he placed on the Mizukaj, then his plan would be set back a few years and he cannot allow that, an idea came across his mind, yes he would do just fine against the Kayubi Jinchuriki, Madara thought to himself with a sadistic grin. Zetsu, inform our little friend that he will be freed if he does something for me, Madara told Zetsu, Zetsu's eyes widened dramatically. You don't mean him now do you? Dark Zetsu asked in a shaky voice. He's too unpredictable, he will more than likely turn on us than to help us, White Zetsu said fearfully. Exactly that's why he is perfect for the job I have for him, 
Madara said to Zetsu with a sadistic grin still on his face. Madara then tells Zetsu what he has to do in order to be freed. Zetsu then sinks back into the ground to complete the task that was given to him. Now let's see how you handle him Kayubi. Madara thought evilly, putting his stupid Tobi mask back on he runs after Kakuzu yelling for him to wait up. Between the border of Hai no Kuni and Cha no Kuni Jiraiya's search for Naruto has ended in yet another failure. He heard rumors of a blonde spiky hair boy roaming around Cha no Kuni, tea country. Believing it to be Naruto he rushes over there to only find out that it wasn't him but a young musician with blonde spiky hair, playing music for various towns. He has been sending Tsunade letters asking to extend Naruto's training time, but in reality he was only extending his time to search for Naruto before he ends up dying at Tsunade's hands. A messenger toad appears in front of Jiraiya with a scroll on its back. Jiraiya grabs the scroll off of the toad's back and reads it. It was a letter from his spy in Kirigakir no Sato stating that he has found Naruto and he's within Kiri's walls. Pulling out a blank scroll Jiraiya writes in it telling him to not let Naruto out of his sights and that he was on his way. Jiraiya hands the scroll over to the messenger toad who took it and puffs away to deliver Jiraiya's message. Turning back around Jiraiya sprints off in the direction of Kirigakir, I've finally found you Naruto just hang on i am coming jiraiya thought while he was sprinting towards kiri he couldn't shake the foreboding feeling that something bad was about to happen somewhere in cha no kuni somewhere in cha no kuni in a dark prison a man sits he was heavily chained up and has chakra suppression seals placed all over his body my my i seem to have a guest today so what do i owe the pleasure for zetsu to come to my humble abode after eight years the man said in a deep voice zetsu slowly emerges from the ground in front of the man Zetsu kept a good distance away from the man. I have orders from Madara-sama that might interest you, Dark Zetsu told him. Oh really and what that might be then? The man asked. In exchange for your freedom you are to capture someone for us, White Zetsu said. But this just isn't anyone. This person is the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, Dark Zetsu finished. Is he strong? The man asked. Zetsu nods his head, then I agree, now if you please. The man holds his chained arms up. Zetsu walks over and unlocks all of the chains. The man stands up after being free from his restraints, looking towards Zetsu the man shot his arm out and grips Zetsu around the neck, the man lifts Zetsu off of the ground with ease, he brings Zetsu's face close to his and says, I should just kill you instead of hunting down some Jinchuriki. Zetsu was trying to pry the man's iron grip off of his neck, but this only served for him to tighten it, while still trying to get out of his grip Zetsu wheezes out, if you don't do what Madara-sama says and kill us, white Zetsu wheezed. He will most certainly kill her, dark Zetsu finished. An audible crack was heard as the man snaps Zetsu's neck, dropping the now dead Zetsu on the ground, he pops all his bones back into place, if you are going to start making threats then you say to me in my face as a man instead of sending a clone to do it, the man said as the Zetsu he killed turned into plants, the real Zetsu appears behind the man. If I were have done that, then you would have most definitely have killed us, Dark Zetsu said, so do we have an accord? Aye, we have an accord, the man said, Zetsu pulls out a picture of Naruto and hands it to him. The man takes a look at the picture, so am I allowed to kill him? No, you need to capture him alive as we need the Kayubi inside of him, White Zetsu told him. But other than that do as you please, he will be found in Kirigakir, but remember we will be watching, Dark Zetsu warned as he sinks back into the ground. The man stares at the ground where Zetsu disappeared in, he started chuckling, soon his chuckling turned into full-blown laughter, so he will be watching me huh, I might as well give him the greatest show he has ever seen, looking at the picture of Naruto. A wicked grin came across the man's face. Kid I hope that you will provide me with a great show, ill hate to be disappointed, the man said in absolute glee as he leaves his personal prison and heads towards Kirigakir, the race was on. So friends today I end the story see next video.